the final series before the All-Star break. For both teams, it's important. The Orioles playing some of their best baseball. Their bats on fire. For the Yankees, they're now four games out. They've got to find a way to catch these O's. The way to do it is beat them. That would start in this series. For the Orioles, it's about putting another team away. Game one, next. Homestand continues as we head to the All-Star break and a great view from on high as the Yankees are in town for a three-game set. The Orioles in first place, three ahead of Toronto and four ahead of the Yankees. And that ballpark is going to be filled tonight, everybody, on a beautiful summer evening. Welcome. I'm Gary Thorne. For the Orioles, it's back into the division and these important wins as they try and lengthen their lead going into the All-Star break. The Orioles have played really good baseball against the American League Eastern teams, especially against the Yankees. And all of the games played so far were in New York. Let's take a look at the numbers that have been put up so far. The Orioles lead in the series four games to two. They've out hit the Yankees 314 to 265, outscored them 38 to 19. Orioles with the advantage in the long ball 10 6 and an ERA that's almost half of what's been put up by the Yankees. So far, so good. Now they just, Mike Bordick, want to repeat those numbers at home. They really do. I mean, last year they lost the season series against the Yankees. 9-10. They only had three wins at Yankee Stadium all year. So this year already bettering that with the four wins. So they're off to a great start. Of course, the Yankees, a veteran team, decimated with some injuries, but they have these veteran guys that know how to win. They're hanging on right now. They're looking for guys to step up. McCann's slumping a little bit offensively. He can have some second half production that will certainly help there. And they need some help from the pitching staff, but you can never count them out. They seem to always be there at the end. I don't know how they found a way to win as many as they have in the division. Look at what these two teams have done. This is against the American League Eastern foes. The record the Yankees are a game below 500. The Orioles are very good 24 and 17 batting average about the same. You see the home runs Orioles with the advantage there. Kind of ironic the runs per game within the division are exactly the same ERA a run better for the O's. Well it's unbelievable how many pitchers the Orioles have that step up within their division. Miguel Gonzalez the starter in tonight's ball game. Great success in the American League East. These guys really know how to heighten their game. You know the Orioles offense is going to be there. They are a very productive offense so you can count on them to hammer out the home runs and drive in some runs and they're going to need that kind of production to have success continued success in the East. Personal note former GM Frank Cashin of the Baltimore Orioles was laid to rest today in the Eastern Shore. To Gene and to all of the family, we extend our condolences and our sympathies and uh, our prayers.
Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. By American Standard, celebrate the indoors today with up to $1,100 instant rebates or flexible financing. Visit your local American Standard dealer at midatlanticcomfort.com. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. This gorgeous summer night here at Camden Yards. Take a look at our train game time temperature. We'll start at 81 degrees. And very little breeze right now. Humidity of 58. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train really hard. For the uh, Yankees who come in 46 and 45, four games out, Gardner, Jeter, and Ellsbury, Deshera, McCann, Roberts, Ichiro, Salarte is back, and Kelly Johnson will be the DH. Ryan Roberts, a hot bat in their lineup right now. All right, let's take a look at the pitch arsenal from Miguel Gonzalez this season, using that fastball at 56%, breaking ball as the curve and slider, using that at 29%, and the changeup, it's a split finger, and it can be really good at times, 15% of the time. For Miguel, take a look at the numbers on the year. 4.22 earned run average, four wins, 81 innings of work, the 91 hits, 64 punch outs, 32 walks for Miguel. Opponents sitting 286, lefties at 295, the righties at 276. The 14 home runs given up on the year from Miguel. He can, he's coming off a great start, eight strong innings, matching a career high. So good to get him back on track. He is ready to go, so Sprite Gardner will stand in. Gardner with a 5 for 15 lifetime off Gonzalez, and our ball game is underway. First pitch taken for a strike. Buck Showalter loves to have Gonzalez on the mound against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium or here at Camden Yards. This is his ninth career start against them. He just feels as though he's got some comfort against the Yankees. Two and two record, 407 ERA lifetime against them. Uh, he has pitched against this ball club this year game number two non decision six innings three runs seven hits had a good outing against the Yankees way back on April nine. One ball one strike count. Everybody straight away on the leadoff batter Gardner with that good speed and a good off speed delivery to him right there one and two a great split finger right there from Miguel Gonzalez. Yeah Michael Miguel uh, early in his career as a Baltimore Oriole. Had opportunities to face the Yankees and really showed that fear, fearless kind of poise on the mound when he went up against them. And that really showed something to Buck Showalter, and he's been able to ride that confidence. Mm, another good one, and he got even the tag put on by Hundley, so the strikeout against Gardner to start the ball game. Back to back split fingers. There you go, throwing this one down and in. You see the late dive action, Gardner out in front. Good time pitch there. Good way to start the ball game. Take a look at the highest career win percentage against the American League East. And Miguel Gonzalez on that list with the 650 win percentage, 13 wins. David Price, he's been around for a while, a lot of success in the East. Scherzer, Hellickson, and Lester ahead of Gonzalez. That'll bring up Derek Jeter. Gets a nice hand. There's going to be a lot of competition in the stands tonight. There are a lot of Yankee fans in this ballpark. It started before the ball game, it'll continue as it goes along. Jeter will take the strike on the outside corner. He is 3 4 11, lifetime against the Orioles starter. Jeter is uh, right now putting up some pretty good numbers. He went through a dry spell a month ago, but of uh, late, he's been hitting the baseball and picking up some extra base hits as well. That one is going to miss inside. Very respectable. 273 batting average for him, 24 walks, a couple of home runs. And nine doubles on the extra base hit department. There are some Yankees that have had some su success here at Camden Yards. Derek Jeter, one of them, career 300 hitter here with a lot of uh, plate appearances, a lot of at bats. I mean, almost over a year's worth of <laughs> plate appearances. So uh, the track rec record speaks for itself there. 319 average here at Camden Yards, and he's had 15 home runs in this ballpark, 15 out of the 24 that he's hit against the Orioles. 2 1 delivery on the way, and Jeter will chop that one foul off his foot in the batter's box, and the count goes to 2 and 2. The ongoing final tour for Derek Jeter. Interesting that uh, here we are in July 11, and it's the first time the Yankees have been here in Baltimore with those first two series being played in New York. 
The Orioles will wrap up the year with four games in New York and three in Toronto on that final road stand of the season. 2 2 delivery on the way, and the pitch will be uh, outside. Jeter takes and gets the count full. Three ball, two strikes. And laying off pretty good split finger there from Miguel. Miguel uh, had a stint on the disabled list with the oblique strain, and three starts after that really had a hard time finding the rhythm on the mound. There was con some concern there, but a lot of hard work really locked into it in his last start here in the early part of the ball game, really keeping everything down in the zone. So seems to have found that consistency. Ball's been carrying pretty good here, so for these Orioles starters who are predominantly fly ball pitchers, you really do need to keep the ball down, get it up in the air, and even though there's not much of a breeze here tonight, it will carry with this warm weather. There's the no decision he had against the Red Sox in that last outing, and it was a good one. He's been no decision in his last two, and has not won in his last three. His last win came against Tampa Bay. It was back on June 17. Three ball, two strike count on Jeter with Ellsbury waiting on deck. Jeter up the middle, may have hit Gonzalez's glove, backhanded by Flaherty, and he'll record the out. Nice play there by Ryan Flaherty. And let's take a look at the rest of the defense here behind Miguel Gonzalez, Cruz Jones, and Marcakis in the outfield. Hardy over at short, Flaherty at second, Machado and Davis on the corners, and Nick Hundley. Behind the plate, Nick uh, riding a seven game hit streak, sharing some time with Caleb Joseph. Gonzalez after the quick first inning. Here's Jacoby Ellsbury, three game hit streak for him coming in. 284 average. He's got a three for nine lifetime against Gonzalez. The Yankees come in, they are ninth in average and 11th in runs in the American League. Middle of the pack in home runs, ninth with 78. Their pitching overall is ninth in ERA. Their starters are ninth. Their bullpen is ninth. You get the feeling they're a 500 team? You're right. That's why they're 46 and 45. All of their numbers, both for Joe Girardi's ball club, both offensively and pitching wise, are right smack dab in the middle. And so is their defense. Their defense is in the middle of the pack of the American League. 1 0 delivery will be fouled back by Ellsbury. Well, they're hoping some guys can really step up. I know we talked about McCann. I mean, he's got 10 home runs this year, and the and the RBIs will be there with that batting average down a little bit. They're looking for some more consistency there. They've really been just devastated with some major injuries to their rotation. There's a look at McCann on the bench. They've already lost four starters now that were their uh, opening day. Tanaka just going down with the elbow injury. Pitch will be taken up high. The nature of the East, though, has allowed a team that is a game over 500 to be right there. I mean, Toronto. They're 48 and 45. The Yankees 46 and 45. The three teams that are over 500, Tampa Bay, Boston, are well below 500 baseball. Here's the 2 1 delivery. It'll be fouled again back into the screen. Other games of note in the East, the weekend series heading into the All Star break. Boston's going to be playing at Houston for their series for the weekend. And Toronto's at Tampa Bay. So a battle right there. Chance for Toronto to. Keep the push on going against the Orioles trying to catch them and a chance for Tampa Bay to maybe make a run if they could have a good series against the Jays. 2 2 delivery and again it'll be fouled back by Ellsbury. Pretty good bat here uh, working Miguel up 16 pitches now. Veteran hitters very patient always. And they uh, their job is to try to get that starting pitcher to throw as many pitches as possible. And they've done that historically. Very disciplined team, take a lot of pitches. Ellsbury, tough to strike out. 2 2 delivery on the way, and got him. Great pitch that caught the inside corner, and a real good start for Gonzalez. He gets two K's, retires the side in order. The Orioles line up when we come back.
DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. Great shots from on high over the Charm City and the ballpark. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Orioles brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Their fares online only at Southwest.com. Mark Agus, Pearson Jones, Cruz Davis, and Hardy, Machado, Flaherty, and Hundley. Look at that career number for Nick Marquecas against the Yankees. Now let's take a look at the pitch arsenal for Hiroki Kuroda this season. He's used that fastball at 49%, breaking ball, slider, and a curveball 27% of the time. And that changeup, it's a split finger, and it's a good one 24% of the time. Great command of all of his pitches. 18 starts this season, 6 and 6 record. That earn run average up a bit, though, 4.20, 109 and a third innings pitched. And he's been a horse, 77 strikeouts, just the 23 walks, though, on the year. Opponents hitting 267, 13 home runs overall. Lefties at 264, righties at 270. He has great command of his fastball, best pitch that he can throw anytime. That's why that walk rate down, the two seamer, he can get it into the low 90s. But the split finger, big time out pitch, that's the bury it for the strikeout. Nick Marquez, the Oriole leadoff batter uh, at 291 on the year. He's a 320 hitter against Hiroki Kuroda with one home run lifetime against him. Nick will take the pitch and it'll be down low for a ball. Marquez continues to pile up outstanding offensive numbers for the Orioles, particularly out of this leadoff spot. He and Adam Jones leading the Orioles in hits and both in the top five in that department. He'll push that one the other way towards the seats and out of play. Marquez with 111 hits is tied for fifth with Brantley in Cleveland. Adam Jones is second with 114 in the American League. Girota, the veteran, really being relied on now to not just have quality starts, but to win games. The injuries Mike was talking about to their pitching staff, he suddenly becomes a veteran that they've really got to count on. 1 1 will be taken inside, and the count goes to two balls and one strike. Yeah, Girota's uh, been pretty amazing, though. 39 years old. He's had three consecutive years of 200 plus innings and certainly on pace for that this season with 109 innings pitched. Larry Rothschild, pitching coach, sitting watching. Mark Agus will take it on the inside corner. We we're talking with a couple of the announcers for the Yankees about the irony of the fact that at the start of the season in spring training, the name that was mentioned about how much will he be able to pitch and can he stay healthy is Hiroki Kuroda. Yeah. Who's left? Kuroda. <laughs> Everybody else is gone. He's still pitching. Two ball, two strike count. Marquez right, got it up in the air. That's going to go to right field. He throw over into the gap, and he'll haul it in. Ichiro making a nice play out there. A great part of the Yankees defense. Gardner and Ellsbury join him in the outfield. Jeter and Roberts up the middle. Salarte just recalled uh, yesterday playing that Cleveland series to share over at first base and McCann behind the plate. Salarte, of course, who had the great start, got sent down, but because of more injuries, they've needed to call him back up. Here is Steve Pierce. Salarte came up to take Carlos Beltran's place. And a breaking ball. He'll lean, but he didn't go around on it. Pierce will be the designated hitter in this ball game as he and Cruz continue to change spots. Cruz out in left tonight. For Pierce, this will be his ninth, eighth game as a DH. He's hitting 414 as a designated hitter. He's had uh, one home run as a DH, and he's really pounded the ball wherever he's been. 1 0 delivery on the way and uh, tried to come inside to him but missed the corner 2 0. Steve Pierce made some adjustments. Now he's always been uh, a pretty productive bench type player with potential power but he's closed himself off. You see that really closed up front front foot keeping that the hips turned and it's helped him to see the ball. He's tracking it a little bit longer. He said when he was opened up before. He would recognize the pitch, but that front hip would fly open too soon and a lot of times not make the solid contact that he wanted. So when closing off just allows him to trust those hands, get the ball deeper in the zone. Reach for that one in order to keep the at bat alive. He certainly has put up numbers nobody expected. Yeah, in the last 10 games he has been red hot. 316, four home runs, and 10 RBI. He is a co player, American League player of the week for the first week in July. 
So big uh, big time numbers for Pierce and uh, another big reason why the Orioles at the top of the East. First innings have been big for him these first at bats. He got a hold of that one down the line towards that fair pole and just missed. I mean everybody was standing on the line look at that one. Marvin Hudson the third base umpire that was way up in the air and he stayed with it and it just missed the pole. Yeah and Steve Pierce did as well when he hit that he was in the box giving some body English and just missing the foul pole and check him out he's working it come on hang on hang on. <laughs> Carlton Fisk would be proud <laughs> right. First innings for Pierce he's eight for twenty with three home runs in the first inning of ball games. And the pitch will be taken down low in the dirt. Steve Molesky drug that one up. Nastinsports.com cutting the numbers. Three ball, two strike count. Pierce with a one for seven lifetime off Corota. Infield pulled around a little bit playing into pull. Got another one, but this one's even further foul. Three ball, two strike count, Pierce. Pretty amazing. It just shows the bat speed he has. How can you pull a ball? That far foul and actually keep that one almost a home run that first swing down the line with the hips that closed. I mean it's amazing. When he figures out the pitch he wants to swing at, he lets it fly. 3-2 delivered again. Throwed got it in. He drove it in the air towards right center field. Ellsbury will go over and put it away. A couple of long fly balls uh, for Garota. And there are two down here in the first inning. Uh, we've talked about the Orioles uh, with their power numbers 113 home runs this season the Yankees they can give up the long ball they've given up 103 that's third most in the majors so too many of those uh, fly balls here at Camden Yards could potentially lead to home runs 13 home runs surrendered by Corrode to those hit by left handers here is Adam Jones Adam just slipping out of the top 10 in average by one point. Still up there, though, as we said, second to Altuve and hits with 114. He's got a 292 lifetime average against Corota. Delivery to him, off speed pitch up high. Now let's take a look at the Jeep inside the numbers. Orioles really bringing the bat since June 27th. That record nine wins, but the 276 batting average, the slugging percentage third. And on a base plus slugging percentage that's third as well so they've been uh, doing some damage with the bat hitting the home runs the extra bases big part of that of course Manny Machado he's been thriving here recently Nelson Cruz has been hot and of course Steve Pierce I just mentioned Adam Jones has done his share of producing as well Jones hitting 297 in July so far he will foul that one back Adams had one home run this month. And a ball and two strikes on Jones, two down, nobody on. Watch the backswing. And Jones letting that go. top hand go and catching the can. He goes over to say something to him, make sure he's all right, gives him a can a moment here as he stands out of the batter's box. Catchers have to move around. It varies from hitter to hitter, as you would expect. You got to look at that back foot, see how deep they are in the box, figure out how long their swing is. Catchers look at that when they're reviewing hitters and their cuts. One, two delivery for their own sanity and well being. And if you don't adjust sometimes, you take one of those back swings. I mean, those are, that's as bad as getting hit by a ball that comes through a foul ball. Oh, yeah. I mean, the yeah. force of that bat on a back swing, that's an oomph to it. That's pretty dangerous. Uh, catch the back of the neck, the back of the head area. It's not protected very much back there. Two ball, two strike count. Jones will take that one in the air to left field. Gardner is there, and that'll do it. So three fly ball outs here in the first inning. We've completed one first game of three against the Yankees. No score.
later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Light. It's right in the inner harbor. And a little sailing going on there. Might even be a class. A lot of classes in the inner harbor on sailing where the kids get down there and sail. Boy, what a night to do that. Lordy. Go to the uh, second inning to Sharon McCann and Roberts will be due up. The Yankees have won five of their last eight. Orioles have won eight of their last ten. Two ball clubs and put a little distance between themselves and those teams trailing. It happened to be Boston and Tampa Bay. Delivered it to Shara will be taken outside for a ball. He has faced Gonzalez only three times and 0 for 3. Good numbers though on the year. That's 17 home runs, 47 RBI. Traditionally a very slow starter, but a pretty good first half for Teixeira. Teixeira, one of those who has done well here, hitting 278 with 10 home runs at Camden Yards. Here's the 1 1 delivery to him and tried to lift it and fouls it off. We go by Buck Showalter's theory that players who do well in a particular ballpark will do it consistently, and you have to be very careful of that, or if they're playing for you, put them in the lineup. There's a lineup of guys who should play at Camden Yards forever. Right. Ellsbury, Ichiro, Teixeira, Jeter. A lot of Yankees have put up some very good career numbers in this ballpark. Two ball, two strike count. Gonzalez left handers 295 against him with six of the 14 home runs he surrendered. The big uppercut creates a pop up. Manny Machado, the only guy on that side of the infield in foul territory, puts it away. The Orioles continue their series with the Yankees tomorrow. It's 4 05. The game is nearing a sellout. Tickets for Sunday's 805 nationally televised game also going fast. So don't miss this great weekend heading to the All Star break. Get your tickets and don't forget, bring along any non perishable food items or cash donations you can to benefit the Maryland Food Bank, part of the annual Orioles Reach Food and Funds Drive. Towering fly ball way up in the air to center off the bat of McCain. Waiting for it. Jones will put it away. The cans retired and there are two down. Bell likes those first pitch outs. Just missing that aggressive early pitch he thought he could drive, but just underneath it. Roberts' first appearance in other than an Oriole uniform in this ballpark. And just kind of a mild smattering of applause, and that's that. Yeah, a lot of Yankees fans here though, so they've seen him. Most of the season anyway, but I know there are a lot of Orioles fans that certainly appreciate what Brian Roberts did in his career here. Unfortunately, uh, marred by some injuries for a few years at the end. Roberts goes after the first pitch, way back, way back and right. Do you believe this? Goodbye, home run in his first at bat for an opposing team at Camden Yards. Brian Roberts hits a home run. And the Yankees have a one nothing lead. Brian Roberts uh, showing that power fifth home run. Of the season. And he's been uh, pretty hot here recently. Jumping all over the first pitch again pretty much center cut. Fastball from Miguel Gonzalez. Miguel just thinking about getting ahead after McCann. Swung at the first pitch Roberts not wasting any time. The ball comes all the way back into the mound. Thrown back into the fans. Joseph goes, uh, Hundley goes out to get it and throws it away. Well, what a return for Brian Roberts. That's that sets a buzz here. Roberts, of course, a switch hitter, left handed. He's had four of his five home runs left handed. So the Yankees go up, ground ball, fair ball down the line. Ichiro will make the turn and head for second base. Marquecas in the corner. He'll get it in and holding to a double. And the Yankees are coming up going after first pitches in this inning and hitting them. Now they're just letting it fly. A couple quick outs and McCann first pitch. Brian Roberts first pitch. Ichiro gets a high fastball and beats that one down the first base line for a double. So Ichiro is on and at second base. That'll bring Salarte to the plate to try and get him home. Yankees runners in scoring position, ninth. It's unbelievable. They're ninth in everything. 
They're hitting 251 with runners in scoring position, and like everything else, in the middle of the pack. Two down. Each row off second base. Gonzalez will get it in there, and it is a strike. Miguel thinking he's got to add a little wrinkle here if they're jumping on first pitch fastballs, last three hitters, so getting ahead with the curve there. Gonzalez has been pretty good in these situations, average against him, 238 with runners in scoring position this year. 0 1 delivery. Marte will foul that one back. Hard to believe you could have a season before the All Star break that's been as up and down as Solarte has had. I mean, he was the king of baseball for the first month and a half. Absolutely took the Yankees on his back at the beginning of the season. It was carrying them. He's gone to, to 260, so very respectable, but most of that came in the first 60 days of the season. 0 2. Gonzalez's delivery to him and he goes way up the ladder and fouls it off. Yeah, chasing there. Expanding with the two strikes. Somehow able to get to that high fastball as Miguel was just trying to change the eye level a little bit. Solarte was sent down to triple A. And then almost immediately recalled for his second stint with the Yankees. Played five games at triple A. Gonzalez again the 0-2 delivery. Solarte had a reach for that one and pops it up second base. Flaherty back and he's got it. So the Yankees will get a run on two hits, no errors, one left. Brian Roberts, his 45th career home run at Camden Yards. Stephen Dan Horton presently assigned to the Defense Information Systems Agency at Fort Meade out of St. Matthews, Kentucky. He enlisted 2003. He's been twice to Iraq, once in Operation Enduring Freedom, the Air Force Base in Kyrgyzstan. He and his wife, four children on hand, and a standing ovation for him between innings. Staff Sergeant Dan Horton. Certainly appreciating that recognition. Everybody in the stadium on their feet. Great salute. A lot of baseball clubs are doing that, and great that the Orioles are part of that. Yankees have the one nothing lead. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. Corota, who has been a ground ball pitcher, 47 percent of the balls hit have been on the ground. It's the average in the American League is 45 percent ground balls, so he's a little above that. He got three big fly balls though in the first inning. Cruz three for 19 lifetime off. Corota. He goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. And Nelson continues in that battle for the lead going to the all star break in home runs and RBIs. He comes into this ball game in a tie. As far as the home runs are concerned Abreu and he both have 28. He leads in RBIs one over Cabrera down to third foul. 
Marvin Hudson getting an early work out the third base umpire. He's had a couple of close calls. Yeah, just missing extra bases there. Catches this pitch out in front. See for yourself how close it was. Wow. Really close to bouncing over the base. Oh to the count on Cruz with Davis and Hardy. Do up. Talk about team taking pitches. We were mentioning that the Yankees are third in the American League in number of pitches per plate appearance. The Orioles are 13th. But there's not a big difference. 3.92 for the Yankees pitches seen. The Orioles 3.76. Yet the difference for Girardi and Joe Walter's team one third and one thirteenth. One two delivery on the way. Cruz will take. That's the one that pitchers have been using of late, trying to get Nelson to chase some kind of a breaking ball, off-speed pitch, slider, cutter, something down and away and out of the strike zone. He was going after it for a couple of games, has laid off it, so they'll have to adjust on that. 2 2 delivery, that's a slow roller, and it's foul. As we saw the other night, you better not let it go much yeah. further than that because the closer you get the third base, the tilt goes to fair territory. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking, where's Solarte? Because this ball is going to work itself back. We saw it in the National Series. Ball looked like it was heading foul and then worked itself back into fair territory. Ended up hitting the third, ba third base. I don't know if that one was ever going to work itself back, but it could. Potentially happen. So uh, when you get that ball close to the line, I mean, it's in foul territory. You better keep it there. Pick it up. Cruz will stand back in a two ball, two strike count. Corotta's delivery to him. That ball will go to center, not hit that hard. It'll stay up though. Ellsbury's got it. So that's four fly balls. Maryland Lottery contestant of the game. Torrance Pratter from Laurel has won 500 for being selected to get 500 more for every Orioles home run hit. Play the Orioles scratch off for the Maryland Lottery. Your chance to be a contestant of the game, and you could win a trip to see the 14 World Series. Enter by September 1st to qualify. You can find out how at mdlottery.com slash Orioles. Here is Chris Davis. Corotas pitched to him. That's a strike. Chris has had good luck off Corotas, seven for 24, with a couple of home runs against the Yankees starter. Still messing around with that Mendoza line for an average of 202, but 14 homers, 45 RBIs. And the pitch will be down low for a ball. And Chris was out early today uh, with Jim Presley. They were juicing up the pitching machine on the mound, trying to. Get it up there as hard as it could go, and he was just trying to take the bat head to the baseball. You see his hits this season by direction. More hits over there to right field. Last year, tremendous success using the whole field. The power, big time power numbers. There's a look at the hitting coach Jim Presley and Chris Davis today driving some balls to left. So, you know, it's in his head. Get back into using the whole field certainly will help him. To one delivery on the way. Sabermetricians got to him. ESPN article broke down the numbers on Chris this year compared to last. One of the biggest differences is off speed pitches. He had the fifth highest batting average against off speed pitches last year at 310. This year he is tied for second lowest at 119. So the off speed pitches, those numbers of base hits off those pitches is way down. 2 2 delivery on the way, and he will go down swinging. Perota will get his first strikeout. Perota has a nasty split finger. He can throw one for a strike that's a little bit slower, and then he throws his strikeout pitch. 87 miles an hour here at the bottom of the zone. Davis thinks it's a fastball, and then it just disappears on him. He get the second out. That'll bring up J.J. Hardy. Hardy having a real good year. Against the Yankees, hitting 417. Hardy has had a home run and four RBIs against the Yankees on the season in the first six games these teams played. Corota, the 1 0. And a little sweeping pitch that will catch the outside corner, 1 1. 
What do you think? Slider? I think that was a split finger. Split I think finger. that was one he takes a little off and just throws it for a strike. And there's he takes enough off of it that a hitter just says, oh, well, I want to get on my front foot here early in the count. Down to third base, Solarte gets the hop in the midsection and makes the play. Six in a row, retired by Corota. The Yankees, after two, have a one nothing lead. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at Southwest.com. By Navy Federal Credit Union. Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. And by Luna. For beautiful new carpet, hardwood, and laminate, call 877-241-LUNA. Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick with you here in the, the city. A big crowd on hand again. For the ball game against the Yankees, the first of three on this beautiful night sunset time. Look at the sun reflecting off the warehouse over there. It is just that pretty here tonight. Shift is put on in earnest as Kelly Johnson will stand in. He's the DH and he's hitting ninth. A couple of reasons. One against Gonzalez. He is four for 11 and has a home run against him. Another reason he's got a 319 average in this ballpark with six home runs. Towering fly ball to right field, make it seven. Way back and goodbye, home run. Sometimes the numbers do tell the truth. These Yankee hitters have been aggressive early here against Miguel Gonzalez. They're trying to get get ahead on Kelly Johnson. He just lets it fly. For his sixth home run of the year, good numbers in his career off Gonzalez. Now five for 12. With a home run added to that stat. Here, center cut fastball, and he gets behind it. Nick Markakis just turns and watches in right field. So two home runs off Miguel Gonzalez, numbers 15 and 16 against him on the year. He gave up one in the last outing against Boston. He has not given up more than two home runs in a ball game this year. The Yankees have gotten two in the first three innings. Gardner at the top of the order, a strikeout victim, his first time up. The Yankees now have hit 80 home runs while giving up 103. Here's the 0 1 to Gardner. He'll lean away. He was leaning in. That wasn't really that far off the plate. One ball, one strike count. Miguel certainly does need to let them know that he's going to be able to come inside. And I think it's great that he's trying to get ahead. Now he's got to figure out how to get ahead with quality pitches, not just kind of groove them there where they're coming after him. Gardner, their leadoff batter, has been on base each of the last 24 games that he's had a plate appearance. One ball, two strike delivery to him, and that'll be way up high and away. And the count evened up at two balls and two strikes. 
The Yankees like the Orioles have actually had a better offense on the road than they've had at home. They are averaging almost four and a half runs a game on the road three and a half at home. Two two delivery on the way Gardner will fight that off. Yeah, and that batting average uh, numbers on the rise on the road kind of coincides with their victories I mean, they play much better 28 wins on the road this season only 18 at home so it's kind of weird how that works you think there'd be that distinct advantage. Yeah. But there hasn't been. Well, they've, I mean that's where they've made hay with those road wins. 2 2 delivery on the way and that ball's punched to center Jones who was in a bit. Will put it away. Gardner retired one down. Time running out on your chance to back the birds during the second half and have major savings by picking up the Birdland Summer Six Pack a ticket to any of your choice. Save up to 20% off the cost of single game tickets. Lock in your games right now. Go to Orioles.com slash six pack. Derek Jeter. Jeter grounded out his first time up. Talking about that Yankee road record. They are tied for first in the American League in road wins with the Oakland A's at 28. Pitch will be taken. Down low for a ball by Jeter. Where Jerry Derek Jeter comes in, uh, a career 301 average against the Orioles. He's had 24 home runs. 280th game he's played against the O's in his career. To short, picked up. Hardy's not sure. Jeter never ran. He thought it was caught on the line and nobody gave a signal. I didn't see an umpire signal that, so Hardy made sure and almost threw it away. And I still don't know. They call that a line drive catch or not. I didn't see anybody make the call nope. either. So Ground ball. 6 3. Nice job by J.J. Hardy. Jeter getting a pitch up in the zone. He thinks it's just a line drive right at Hardy. He turns his back and just walks away. So he thought he caught it in the air as well. It really would have been embarrassing if that throw had gone Ooh. over and come back to Davis. But it didn't. So two down with a run in on the homer by Kelly Johnson. Here's Ellsbury, strikeout victim, his first time up. Ellsbury coming in, the modest. Three game hit streak. Yeah, a two for five in the loss at Cleveland yesterday. Ten for his last 40 at bats on the road. A one delivery going for the outside corner and misses that. Corey Blazer in his third year, the umpire behind the plate, one of the newer umpires in Major League Baseball. Tends to be a bit on the pitcher's side of the strike zone, but not by much. One ball, one strike. And try to get inside that time and will miss. Goes to two and one. Probably closer than it uh, appeared with the ball call. Just Nick Hunley was setting up away. And Miguel Gonzalez missed his spot. Didn't get the call there. Ellsbury waiting on the two one. That's going to go to left and that'll be a base hit. Cruz will play it on the hop. Ellsbury is on, and there are two away and a runner at first base for the Yankees. Win lunch with Adam Jones presented by Care First. Just text Masson's word of the day, healthy, to 29292 for your chance to win. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Mark Teixeira popped out his first time up. Yankees today got Jeff Francis from the A's trying to bolster their pitching staff a bit. Minor leaguer to be named later, cash considerations, deal struck. Francis not here. They also made a move designating the right hander Jim Miller for assignment, and they brought up right hander Matt Daly from uh, their Triple A ball club. So, as a number of clubs are doing, roster changes are being made before the All Star break, particularly with people who they shopped and nobody. They could strike a deal with on some players, so you just make the moves. To share a lifting that one. Oof. That's a moonshot. It's foul. It way back there in right field. A lot of that breaking ball just takes enough off of it, 78 miles an hour to get to share out in front, and he almost hit that one out of the ballpark. Foul. 
The Orioles Abaldo Jimenez has been put on the DL twisted an ankle in the parking lot. Say no more. To share a 1 count 2 down. Throw over to get him back. The Orioles uh, did not. They're playing a man short tonight. They did not make a call up to take Jimenez's place. And as a result, obviously, he's not going to start the ball game tomorrow. It'll either be Chris Tillman or Kevin Gosman. And they're, they're going to start. It's just which day. Those are the two starters for Saturday and Sunday. Another uppercut swing way up in the air to left field. Cruz coming in. He's got it. So a run in on a couple of hits. No errors. One left on base. Two homers in the game. Roberts and Johnson in this inning. Never stop improving. It's brought to you by Lowe's. Oh, Manny Machado uh, coming off knee surgery in the offseason started slow. First 37 games at 218 average, four home runs, 11 RBIs. Kind of trying to get his timing back and his legs underneath him. Well, his timing is back and his legs are certainly underneath him. And he has been in a groove. Last 22 games, 348, five home runs, and nine RBI and 967 OPS is outstanding. So oh, Manny will stand in for the Orioles who are looking for another comeback already in this ball game. Machado Flaherty and Hundley will be up. Buck Showalter letting Manny Machado get as you put it Mike his legs back under him by keeping him down in the lineup instead of moving him back up into that number two spot for every game as he had been playing he stayed down a little bit that's a little more comfortable there. And you've got Steve Pierce who's red hot, so you want his bat up at the plate. Although Manny certainly is pushing that now, if, if you go by the theory of you want your hottest hitters right. at the top of the lineup. No one delivery to him is taken one and one. I think potentially here with both Manny Machado swinging the bat as well as he is and Steve Pierce, it becomes a a kind of a matchup thing. Who has the better numbers off a certain pitcher? You probably want him up at the top of the lineup, but this Orioles lineup has strength all the way through. So uh, a great problem to have where you want to hit guys. He's uh, Manny is four for 17 with uh, a home run. Uh, Garota. Garota's retired the first six. A strikeout, four fly balls, one ground ball coming from, as we said, the uh, Pitcher generally is on the ground ball side of things. Retires 68 percent of leadoff batters on the year. Two on delivery. Throw to get one in. Foul back into the screen. Pretty good pass on 90 mile an hour fastball there from Manny Machado. I'll tell you what's been so impressive about Manny has been his ability to hit so many different pitches. I mean he's covering up and in, down and away, different types of speeds and locations, and that just uh, tells you how well he's seeing the ball. He's able to. React to certain pitches, use his athleticism to get the bat head to the baseball, and he's been doing some damage. That one fouled off right at the plate and had some real good sink on it, too. And a two ball, two strike count. 
You can see where the ground balls would come from with the splitter when he's got it working with all the dive that he's got in it. It's just the uh, Orioles have been able to line up some other pitches, fastballs, pitches that are up in the strike zone for the fly balls they've had, but they've been outs. Two ball, two strike count, outfield deep, all the way around, and uh, they'll ask for the timeout and step out. Corota can get uh, the ground balls with that split finger, but if he keeps his two seamer down, it can have some pretty good sink action. So that'll work for him. But the fly balls, a lot of times on the mm -hmm. two seamer, as Manny gets the nasty split finger there, it'll stay on the same plane up in the zone, and you'll see the pop-ups off that pitch. Two strikeouts in the ball game now for Corota. There's the split finger, 87 miles an hour, and this one works itself down and into Manny Machado. Looks like it's going to stay up for a while. And right at the end, that late bite, and just enough off of it to get under the bat of Machado. Ryan Flaherty stands in. Flaherty's not had a hit off Corota in nine at bats. Corota has struck out 79 in 112 innings worked. But he does not surrender walks. He has the eighth best walks per nine inning ratio in the American League. Only 23 walks in 112 innings. This Yankee ball club. I mean, it's strange. It's strange that with all the injuries they've had, they're doing as well as they are and have won as many games. But I find even stranger the fact their pitchers right now, with the strikeouts they've had tonight, have 778 strikeouts, the most in franchise history to this point of a season. They are on pace to strike out a franchise high. How can that be? <laughs> one one delivery on the way. Ground ball second. Deshera got caught off the bag. He gets back. Play made by Roberts. We'll take a look. Uh, lowest walks per nine innings. We'll go along with the strikeouts. Roki Kuroda just 2.505 walks per nine. So I mean historically he's been around the plate and had low walk rates and he's just trailing Fister Aaron Lee and Zimmerman in that category. And one of the reasons in answer to my question that I posed rhetorically is their bullpen. They got some guys in the bullpen who can oh set people gosh. down with they have incredible arms up uh, that baton says who just made the all star game 81 strikeouts in 53 innings. Are you kidding me. Yeah. And Tanaka of course uh, just going on the disabled list he had 135 so there are some strikeout pitchers. Let's not forget Roberts and uh, pretty powerful arm as well down there in the closer role. So the back end of that bullpen, big time strikeouts. Their starters rank seventh in strikeouts per nine innings. Their bullpen ranks first. And that one's going to be foul back. So Corota trying to go through the lineup, retiring all nine. And Cunley trying to prevent that. Cunley getting the start behind the plate. He's got a seven game hit streak coming into the ball game. Going 10 for his last 28. A couple of home runs, five RBIs, eight runs scored in those seven ball games. One-one delivery, and that's going to be taken. Two and one. Now there's a nice little chemistry going on right now. Uh, Nick Hunley been around a little bit. Caleb Joseph, you know, called up, and they're working well together. I mean, they're all on the same page about this competitiveness, trying to make it to the postseason. Working well together. Hunley, a great student of the game, still trying to learn his pitchers in certain situations here. There's a look at Caleb Joseph, who's done a fine job behind the plate since being called up. Of course, with Matt Weeders down, but now he's back to actually help aid in that learning process for both Hunley and Caleb Joseph. So I think there's a nice situation going on, and they're doing really well with the absence of Matt Weeders. And there's no great effort by the Orioles out to find another catcher. Now look, another all-star catcher comes along was available. All right. You might add him, but it's not a big search. Well, you know what is so important, and I think for, for all teams, you can't just go out and get a name. You have to understand what the player is all about. Is he a character guy? Is he going to fit it in well with this clubhouse? That'll be to the hole, and he does get the base hit. So there's the first Orioles base runner, and Hunley's got an eight game hit streak. Uh, Hunley, uh, one of those guys, when they were thinking about going out and trying to find a catcher, uh, John Russell had had Hunley before, so he knew about his makeup here, getting on an inside fastball to keep his hitting streak alive, just hammers it through the 5 6 hole. 
Nice clean single. So the Orioles get one on here, trailing 2 0, their first hit. It'll turn the order over to Mark Kakis, who flied out to right field his first time up. Right through the Gwyn hole. I think baseball ought to rename that for Tony. Oh, yeah. Five and a half hole. Two down. Corotas delivered in neck, a breaking ball for a strike. Orioles have had some big hit games recently. Let's we'll see if they can continue that outstanding series against the Nationals, winning four to three yesterday to take the series. They are 14, 9, and 7. Their series record coming into this series against the Yankees. Delivery on the way to him, and that will be down low. One ball, one strike count. Good quiet take there from Nick Markakis. Had a hit taken away from him his first at bat. Ichiro ran one down in right center, squared it up pretty well though. Markakis has been hot himself. Of course, a great first half. Last 15 games though, you see the numbers there, 302 batting average. He's been consistent all year long. Runner off first with a short lead over there to share a holds. One one delivery on the way. Marikakis ground ball. Roberts over to get it. Flip to second. There's the force to Jeter. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Three complete. It's the Yankees two and the Orioles nothing. The Orioles were playing in New York. The Yankees were adding a couple of monuments to Monument Park. But Showalter talked about wearing the Orioles uniform and about the legends who are in the park in Baltimore. I consider it an honor every time I go out on Camden Yards Field. And we got some monuments too. I was talking to Jones the other day. So you know the difference. Everybody out there in that monument park at our place is there because they were a good player, but because they were won, won a championship. Is there anybody out there that didn't win a championship? It's a good question. That's what makes pe people ma remember. So you know, we we don't take a back seat to many people with uh, our history and tradition. And but you know, obviously the Yankees have a lot. That's our Antwerp and quote of the day. Visit their new Route 32 Clarksville facility. Gonzalez delivery and therefore a strike all month long and Twerpen will beat any competing offer in your trade in so hurry in and make sure when you come to Camden Yards Oriole Park you visit the beautiful Legends Park that's out in the picnic area out beyond center field that ball drilled into the corner Brian McCann's got himself a base hit Marquegas will hold him to a single McCann not running well at all. Gets down to first base, but it's a leadoff single here in the fourth inning, and another hard hit ball off Gonzalez. And again, uh, beating the shift, the line drive out over Ryan Flaherty said, Take a look at the breaking ball. It's 
kind of hovering up in the strike zone. He's able to get some extension on it, catch it out in front. See Flaherty with the jump, but McCann not running well, but he also knows that Nick Marcakis is out there playing that right field wall, so holds it first base. So that will bring up Brian Roberts, who delivered a home run on the first pitch he saw in a Yankee uniform here at Camden Yards. His fifth home run of the year. He'll take that one in the dirt for a ball. The Yankees now two runs on five hits. They've left two. The Orioles no runs, one hit. They have left one. Brian Roberts did not play in the ball game yesterday. 13 hits and his uh, 14 hits now in his last 45 at bats. McCann not going anywhere at first base. And Ichiro waiting on deck. Manny Machado in at third. 1 0 delivery on the way. And that's going to be inside. And falls behind 2 0. Well, Brian Roberts throughout his career. Uh, He's a great professional hitter. The ability to work a count and rarely swings at bad pitches. So you got to be uh, around the plate anyway. And we'll see what he can do if a mistake is made. So quality pitches have to be thrown. 2 0 count. Now let's get it in there and it's foul back. Roberts, of course, for this season, putting up his first numbers against the Orioles. He's hitting over. Uh, 315 now against the O's on the year with that one home run. Two ball, one strike count. Roberts had seen only one at bat prior to this game against Gonzalez. Two ball, one strike delivery to him. Roberts will lift that one in the air to left field. Cruz. Runner all the way down to second. We'll head back. Sunday night, the Orioles host the Yankees in the special primetime ESPN 805 nationally televised game. The rivalry showcasing will take place in the final home game before the All Star break. Your chance to show the nation a lot of orange. So get your tickets and see the ball game Sunday night. Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. You can see the big house on hand for this one. Four o'clock game tomorrow afternoon, eight o'clock Sunday night. Tillman or Gosman will go against Shane Green in the ball game tomorrow, and then Tillman or Gosman against somebody the Yankees have not named on Sunday. How's that for being definitive? <laughs> Pitch will be taken up high for a ball. Ichiro had a double. His first time to the plate. And it's not that they're uh, really being secretive. They just don't know. They don't know what's going to happen in the next couple days. 1 0 count with one away. In at third still Manny Machado delivery and that's going to miss a little bit low. Mitro is going to get ahead on the count two and oh with a pitch count up to fifty three. Each row with a lifetime batting average three thirty eight coming in the fifth highest Jacoby Ellsbury three forty three the fourth highest. Among Batting averages against the Orioles. He's going to add another one to that one. Way back. Oh, right off the wall. Run's going to be held. McCann, any other runner would have scored on that, but McCann's legs are so bad. He really just limps around. Hard to believe he can do the catching that he does. Each row's got two doubles. McCann, uh, he's got a lot of years in the major leagues. Most of all of his career up until this year spent with Atlanta, but take a look at each row's swing. Get a pitch in the middle of the plate, works himself into a hitter's count, and drives it into the gap. Marcake is giving chase. Ichiro standing on second base with his second hit of the ball game. Well, Ichiro, that's the old Ichiro swing right there. Falling away, barrel right. of the bat. That's amazing what he's done throughout his career. Over 2,800 hits in his career. He's hitting over 360 now in the month of July. The infield is going to be drawn in. Solarde popped out his first time up. Second and third, one down. Gonzalez's delivery to him, and that'll be foul back for a strike. The Orioles will try and cut the run down, and you know McCann is not going to be running on contact. He's not going anywhere until that ball goes through. Yeah, and the Orioles can afford to play uh, as deep as possible. 
Knowing McCann's legs uh, heavy over there at third base. So they are in slightly, but giving themselves enough room to create more range. Here's the 0 1 delivery on the way, and that's going to be outside. Salarte is still a very solid 297 with runners in scoring position, even though the average, as we said, has fallen off from the great numbers he had over the first 60 days or so of the season. 1 1 the count. McCann at third, each are 0 1 at second base. Timeout asked for by Hundley, who wants to go to the mound. Salarte, a uh, career minor leaguer, as Hundley and Gonzalez have a little conversation about what they're going to throw here. Had a real good spring. And the Yankees need a little help over there at third base. And he ended up, like you had said, really uh, keeping them afloat through the first couple months. I mean, got off to a tremendous start. But like so many players, you have to have the ability to make the adjustments as the season goes on. The pitchers are going to. Find different ways to pitch to you, and he couldn't recover. He ended up having being sent back down to the minor leagues to try to get his swing right. Well, called right back up. So another opportunity for Salarte here. But who knows what's going to happen when uh, Carlos Beltran comes back off the disabled list? He's on that seven-day concussion DL list. Got hit by a ball in the head while he was in the cage taking batting practice. Bounced off the cage and hit him in the head. 2 1 delivery and off speed delivery is going to be taken outside. Gonzalez in a struggle right now. Three ball, one strike count, only one away. The Yankees have two on. They've got the 2 0 lead. Now it hitting the Orioles 6 1, playing here in the fourth inning. They've had home runs by Roberts and Kelly Johnson. Here's the 3 1 delivery. Solarte will put it up in the air. It is not deep. Jones coming. McCann's not going to tag on this. Adam will easily make it into the cutoff, man. And there's a big second out. Time for all fans to tweet their photo using hashtag Mass and Fan Photos for a chance to have it shown in a future broadcast brought to you by ATT. Well, that was a great pitch there from Miguel Gonzalez. I mean, Salarte up there hacking. So Gonzalez working the perimeter of the plate gets uh, Salarte in a hitter's count, but comes up with a big split finger. Looks him to pop up weakly, and shallow enough for him. McCann can't score. So Kelly Johnson will stand in. The home run is sixth of the year, leading off the third inning. Gonzalez a chance to get out of this inning, and that ball put high in the air. Cruz is back. He's under it. And that will do. It. So no runs on a couple of hits, no errors. Two are left in scoring position. Two nothing Yankees. University of Maryland, University College, July 10, 2001, All Star Game. Cal, 19 straight All Star appearance. A Rod says, No, no, you go over there. 
They swap positions. Third inning. Belts a home run of Chan Ho Park, becoming the oldest player to hit a home run in the All Star game. Fittingly, was named the MVP, became the first AL player to win the award twice. July 10, 2001. This season, will it be Derek Jeter doing something like that? I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, both players, obviously, amazing Hall of Fame careers and the flair for the dramatic, always rising to the occasion. Kyle Ripken did it throughout his career. Derek Jeter certainly on that level as well. Kel is going to be part of the 56 Hall of Famers returning for the induction ceremonies this year in Cooperstown, tying an all time high in Hall of Famers coming back for any induction ceremony. There are 66 living Hall of Famers. That got him. So the Orioles are going to get a leadoff man on, just barely, but. Tuck that jersey on Pierce so the Orioles get their second base runner. A lot of times pitchers want to do something to try to disrupt Steve Pierce's rhythm up there at the plate. So locked in, really doesn't even flinch. Stays in and takes it off the jersey, get himself on first base. That represents at the plate the potential tying run in the ball game. Adam Jones fly down his first time up, third hit batter by. Garota this season. We'll see if the Orioles can take advantage of it. Very short lead at first. Very little base stealing done against Garota. Two out of four in the year. This is his 19th start. Fouled off by Adam. And an 0 1 count. Kuroda, a pretty good athlete. He can be quick to the plate when he wants. He has a good feel for the running game. Uh, he's been around for a while. While a uh, veteran pitcher, we talked about his age being 39 years old. He's, uh, he's been a really good fielder as well throughout his career. I was reading a note earlier. He made an error in his last start. It was his first error in four years. So uh, pretty impressive stuff. From the veteran pitcher. Be tough to remember the last one, wouldn't it? Sounds like you. Oh, one the count. And a chopper, Baltimore chop up the middle, off the glove of Jeter. Going over to third base is Pierce. Ball had a lot of bounce on it, and Jeter thought he had it lined up, and then it went right off the top of his glove to Ellsbury in center. And the high chopper, I don't think there was ever a chance of getting two, but Jeter getting to the baseball, but that second hop, a Super Bowl hop, kicks off Jeter's glove and into the outfield. See how high this bounces, extra spin, kicks it away from Jeter and Steve Pierce on his horse easily into third base. Extra top spin there, went off the top actually of Jeter's glove. That will be a base hit. Jones credited with a single. And the Orioles have runners on at first and third with nobody out trailing two to nothing. And here is Cruz who fly it out to centers first time up Orioles first base runner in scoring position tonight. Now Jones at first to share a holding on him. Corota will keep an eye on him. Cruz will take the pitch outside for a ball. And we talked about that spot that pitchers are trying to work on Cruz. Occasionally there has been a hole on Nelson down and away, but it better be a good slider. If they make a mistake on the plate with that pitch, he has been powdering the ball to right center field. Had a huge home run against the Nationals. 1-0 the count. And a foul ball. Take a look at uh, Nelson Cruz's power zone. Oh, pretty good coverage all over the plate. Certainly a mistake in the middle. He's going to do some damage, but he's been covering all areas, all quadrants down and away, up and away. He's had a nice, quiet approach all season long and a great consistency with the uh, batting average and the home run RBI production. Base runners off first and third. Rota will throw over. Cruz wants to pump the numbers up here at home. Boy, if he does that, imagine what they'll be. He's got the biggest difference in home road batting average. 232 at home, 346 on the road. 
He has the biggest slugging difference between home and road and the biggest OPS difference between home and road. One ball one strike delivery on the way and that'll be taken to the dirt to the backstop and Pierce will score. And the Orioles are on the board to make it a two to one game. It looked like that ball hit the dirt so it'll be called a wild pitch I think. Now spike the split finger here. Got to be careful with Nelson Cruz. A lot of dangerous hitters in this Orioles lineup in McCann. He just tries to pick it bounce so far out in front instead of sliding that body over to knocking it down. Steve Pierce able to score. The run scores on the fifth wild pitch of the year by Corota. Potential tying run now at second Adam Jones. And a two ball one strike count on Cruz. And a swing and a miss on that pitch down and away. And it will go to two and two. A good slider there. From Corota. A nice late break here. Good finish on it. Down and away off the plate. So executing pretty well. Get some swing and misses on Cruz. Talking about differentials for Nelson. 10 home runs at home, 18 on the road so far. Two ball, two strike count, delivery to him, and he'll chop at that. Foul tipped into the mitt. Got him. Cruz saying it bounced. He's asking the home plate umpire to ask the first base umpire. Now Buck Showalter will come out. Corey Blazer, the home plate umpire. We'll take a look. Uh, you saw that split finger grip, and here's one that dives down and in. I don't think he ever touched it, though. He didn't foul it off, did he? Take a look. Hard to tell if he even got a piece of it. Yeah, yeah. He hit the ground. But Hit the ground, but did he foul it? And slow mall up, all diving down and in. No, he never hit it. Cruz will be retired on the strikeout. That'll be the third by Corota in the game. Orioles first out though of the inning. Adam Jones at second base and Chris Davis coming up. Two all stars talking out there at second. They'll be in Minnesota on the same team playing together again. Jeter at short, Jones in center. I'm explaining what happened on that ground ball Jones hit to Jeter and he just said it took off on him. Ooh, that extra top spin on the second hop. Chris Davis, chance to tie it up or better. Chris hitting 286 runners in scoring position. Big uppercut. He's been showing some quick. He's been very aggressive with that split finger. Take a look at that defense from overhead. Brian Roberts sliding into shallow right field. Judah trying to keep uh, Adam Jones close, cut him down a little bit. 0 oh, 1 count on Davis. And another one, same place and the same result. Tough to lay off the split finger. Throwing it hard, keeping it down in the zone. Trying to be aggressive on the fastball. The good split finger is really tough to pick up. That rotation appears to be a fastball until the very end. Rota known for the good splitty. Davis keeping an eye on Corota who comes to that set and looks back. 0 2 count coming. All the way to the backstop. Jones to third, no throw. Two wild pitches in the inning. <laughs> Girardi can't help but smile a little bit. Yeah, hit the ball here. Just fires it up over McCann's head. But here it hit the backstop, the brick back there. <laughs> That's a fly. That changed everybody's eye level. A lot of times pitchers <laughs> try to work up in the zone, but listen to this. 
Sounded like a ball hit by a bat when yeah. it came off that brick wall. Yeah, it knocked the brick loose. Now the Yankees infield is going to move in. One ball, two strike count, and one away. They're going to try and cut that run down. The pitch is going to be down. Talking about the numbers that were run on Davis, comparing it to last year. Last year, according to the uh, article in on ESPN.com, Davis hit 380 on pitches in the strike zone. 380 this year, 233. Another number that's way down. Two ball, two strike count. Jones off third base. In the air. It's deep enough. Gardner going back and over. Jones will tag. He'll score. This ball game's tied at two. And a couple of wild pitches. One that scored a run. Two wild pitches to set up the other, and Davis gets the RBI. Well, the Orioles' offense uh, able to take advantage of some mistakes. Yeah, the wild pitches, but Derek Jeter, the veteran shortstop, uh, should have made that play up the middle off the bat, Adam Jones, to get the force out at second. And instead, it goes out to center field, and now two runs on the board for the Orioles to tie the ball game up. Davis gets his 46th RBI, his third sack fly of the year. And Hardy gets hit in the back. Perota having a wild inning. He is all over the place. Wild pitch in the dirt, wild pitch over the catcher's head, and then right in the middle of the back on Hardy. He's hit two batters. Yeah, he got Steve Pierce in the jersey trying to come in. Well, this one, that's a big miss. I mean, that's right in the middle of J.J. Hardy's back. J.J. Hardy stands well off the plate. So Hardy will get on hit by a pitch for JJ second time he's been plunked two hit batters in the ball game which was as many as Corota had on the year in hit batters now Manny Machado two down two two game Orioles still just two hits in a really strange inning Pierce was hit by a pitch to start the inning. He scored on a wild pitch after Jones had singled and the Orioles had run as the first and third then another wild pitch moved Jones over and a sack fly by Davis gets him in here started it all though when his jersey got flicked by a pitch. 1 0 delivery and that's going to be away. Now typically uh, plus command of that two seam fastball but a couple of them. Getting away, maybe because he's throwing so many split fingers here in the early part of the ball game. Now this Orioles lineup can really make you do some different things as they try to find ways to get them out and keep them off balance. So during the early going, the Orioles offense putting some pressure on here, maybe forcing Perot to get out of his game plan a little bit. Now losing some command. Machado with a 250 number against the Yankees coming into this ball game. Strikeout victim his first time up. Hardy with a short lead at first base. The Orioles getting two in on one hit in this inning. 2 0 delivery on the way. That ball drilled in the air to the corner. Gardner's not going to get it. Will it be fair? No. We'll take a look at what Corota has thrown tonight. The only 38% fastballs, 29% breaking balls, and that split finger 33% of the time. So a lot of off speed pitches to this Orioles lineup. Maybe that's why he's lost command of that two seamer, which he's had such great control of throughout his career, throughout this season. I mean, we talked about his very low walk rate, so great command of all of his pitches, always around the zone. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way. Chopper he got on top of. Jeter's got this to Roberts. That will retire the side. So the Orioles are going to come away with a couple of runs on one hit. A wild pitch scored one. Davis got the RBI, and I'll be right back. Oh, you've got to be kidding. There is a heaven. And there it is.
get direct TV call 1 800 direct TV. Over Oriole Park at Camden Yards with this big Friday night crowd on hand to see if the O's can extend their lead. Uh, Toronto's got a 5 1 lead over Tampa there in the fourth inning, playing in Tampa for the weekend series. Blue skies up there tonight, a great night to be either up there or on the ground. So Miguel Gonzalez sees his team get the two runs back, evening it up as we go to the fifth inning. Be the top of the order. Coming up for the Yankees, Gardner, Jeter, and Ellsbury. Orioles with a 4 2 lead in the season series against the Yankees. The Yankees have winning records against Boston and Toronto in the East. Losing record against the Orioles. And the pitch will be taken away. And this is one of those. Uh, Important innings for Miguel Gonzalez and the Orioles. Nice to have a quick shutdown inning. Get this Orioles offense back in there. Put some pressure. Keep the pressure on Corota. Gonzalez retired the Yankees in order in the first inning. A couple of hits in the second. The home run by Kelly Johnson in the third. A couple of hits in the fourth, but he got out of it. Yankees 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position in the ball game. And a swing and a miss. Took a big cut on a pitch that was up. One and two. A little extra life on the high fastball there from Gonzalez. And Gardner giving chase there up and out of the zone. Gardner's got himself uh, a little streak going. He's reached base in 24 consecutive games. Go right back up there and see if he'll go after it again, and he would not. Two ball, two strike count on Gardner. And he will go over the top of that, and he's gone, and Gonzalez has got his third K. Well, worked up in the zone on a couple pitches and then finishes him off with a nice pitch. Gets on the side, a little slider here, and a late bite at the end. It's Gardner to swing through. A big first out. Jeter with an 0 for 2 in the game. He has grounded out twice. He's hitting under 170 now against the Orioles this year. Delivery to him. That is a strike on the inside corner. 3 for 13. Lifetime off Gonzalez. No walks, three strikeouts for the Orioles starter. Corotto on the other side, no walks, three strikeouts, but he's hit two batters and had two wild pitches. No one delivery on the way to him, and that's a strike two. Good fastball there from Miguel. Back to back, 93 miles an hour. Paints the inside corner on the first one. That one on the outer third to get ahead of Jeter. Well, now let's see if he comes after him with a strike. And tries to get him to chase. Here's the 0-2 delivery, and he got him. Four strikeouts, two in a row. It didn't take long there. A couple fastballs and the nasty split finger. Saw that split finger grip. A great location down and away to get Derek Jeter. Jeter throughout his career so good with two strikes, the ability to use right field, but not there. That'll bring Ellsbury up. He's had a base hit and he has struck out. Base hit gives him a four game hit streak. Infield swings around a little bit, playing him to pull. And the pitch is on the inside corner for a strike. A lot of strikes being thrown in this inning by Gonzalez as he attacks the hitters. Doing a nice job making some quality first pitch strikes with all of his pitches. Oh, one delivery is going to be a little bit inside. Ellsbury, of course, first year with the Yankees, finished up 
with Boston with a real good year hit 298 last year. 297 lifetime. Batting average. Coming into the year. That'll be inside again. Two ball one strike count on Ellsbury. Ellsbury one of those players that can really do it all and he's locked in offensively he does have the power numbers he's had some big. Power years but good speed. Covers a lot of ground in the outfield so. Well rounded player. Both offensively and defensively. Kind of player the Red Sox have really missed this <laughs> yeah. season. Three ball, one strike delivery on the way, and he'll take it full. Ellsbury second in stolen bases. Altuve leads with 41. Ellsbury's got 24. Boy, in Houston, Altuve kind of gets lost. But what a year. Second in batting average for him. He's right now third in RBIs. He's had the most hits and leads the league in stolen bases. A great young player. Unfortunately for him, in a losing ball club. 3 2 delivery. Down to first base, handled by Davis. And there's that good inning Gonzalez wanted. He retires the side. 1 2 3, second time he has done that in the ball game. First of three against the Yankees, tied at 2 2. A lot of action in the fourth inning. Started off, Pierce takes one off the jersey, gets himself on base. Then Adam Jones, the high chopper, out to Derek Jeter. Well, off the top of the glove, goes down as a single. Pierce on the third, but he scores on the wild pitch from Corota with the Orioles on the board. And then Adam Jones, he advances third on the second wild pitch of the inning. Chris Davis with the sack fly out to Gardner to score Jones early. So a little bit of everything. From the Orioles offense to put a couple runs on the board and this game is knotted up both pitchers going two earned runs here three strikeouts for Corota four strikeouts for Gonzalez as they work into the fifth inning remember Geico 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance Flaherty will foul off the first pitch delivered he grounded out his first time up Flaherty Hunley and Marquecas for the Orioles who've had only two hits. Off Corota, he's been his own worst enemy. Hundley had a base hit. Jones had a base hit. Two singles. But a 2 2 game. Turns that pitch over, down and away, and an 0 2 count. Left handers 264, right handers 270. Off Corota. On the road, his record 3 and 3. ERA just over 4. Doesn't really matter much, home or away. His numbers are about the same. 0 2 pitch. Flaherty takes and it will miss outside for a ball. 
Brought up to the 70 pitches thrown in the ball game. We remind you again the Yankees bullpen at least for a couple of their pitchers outstanding. Here's the one two back end really tough. That'll be go to Roberts shuffles it over and we'll get the up. You were mentioning uh, Hiroki Kuroda his road home and road numbers well seven starts at home and a three and one record look at that earned run average of one point nine oh but on the road. And this is all versus the Orioles by the way oh and two with a 10 13 earned run average here at Camden Yards so an opponent sitting three eighty five. So he's had some trouble some tough luck in the Orioles offense able to do some damage here. At home. Major difference in that regard against the Orioles. Hundley up. Hundley got the first base hit. First base runner. As Corota started by retiring eight in a row, and then Hundley got that single in the third inning, increasing his hit streak to eight games and now four for 17. Lifetime off Corota. 0 1 delivery to the Oriole catcher and a swing and a miss. A lot at stake here in this series before the All Star break. The Yankees four games out in third place. Toronto three games out, second place. Well, you know, the Yankees certainly would like to have a good weekend here in Baltimore. The Orioles have been playing some great baseball, probably their best of the season here in the past few weeks. Everything kind of working together, getting some good starting pitching. Offense clicking, bullpen's been outstanding. They want to go in the All Star break feeling good. Because after the break, it's not going to be easy. Head out to the West Coast, take on some of the tougher teams in the game right now. Ball put up in the air to right field. Ichiro will come in on it. And he's got it for the up. Two down. When the Orioles win, everyone wins, and all season long, when the Orioles win and score five or more runs, you get 50% off regular menu price online orders at PapaJohns.com by entering promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's valid or participating Baltimore area, Papa John's. Two away, bottom half of the fifth inning, Nick Marquegas. Nick has flied out, hit into a fielder's choice. And the pitch to him is going to catch the outside corner for a strike. Arcagas coming in, uh, hitting 263 this month. Orioles have been led in the homer department here in July by Manny Machado with a couple and Steve Pierce with two. Orioles second only to Toronto in the league in home runs hit. 0 1 delivery, same place, same result, 0 2. And McCann actually wanting that pitch on the inside corner. It's still pretty good job of keeping it down in the zone to get the second strike on Marcakis. See the pitch track. First pitch uh, appeared to be just off. Second pitch right in that outer third. And the 0-2 delivery will be sliced. Inside out swing fouls it off. Right back here tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock game, three thirty O's extra, four o'clock for the ball game. Probably uh, after the game tonight, they'll announce the starter for tomorrow, whether it's going to be Tillman or Kevin Gosman. Whoever doesn't start tomorrow starts Sunday. The delivery on the way, Marquegas the chopper, that'll go to first base. To share takes it to the bag himself, and that's it. So another uh, quick inning as the pitchers dominate here in the fifth. Orioles retired in order, two two.
bit of a jam. Runners at second and third. And he's facing Kelly Johnson, who homered in his previous at bat. He makes the big pitch to get him to fly out to Nelson Cruz and get out of that trouble to end the fourth. Yankees stranding four in the game, two in scoring position. Those two right there. Orioles have left a couple on, not in scoring position. Shift is going to be put on as Mark Teixeira will stand in. And he will take the pitch for a strike. Teixeira has popped out and flied out. Switch hitter, three game hit streak coming in for the Yankees. 0 1 to him, fouled off as he reached. Right handed, he's hitting 208, left handed 254. 15 of the 17 home runs that Mark Deshare has hit this year have been hit left handed. Nothing unusual there. That's his power. 0 2 delivery to him. Deshare was trying to hit another one. Foul tipped and good play by Hundley to hang on to it. Five strikeouts for Gonzalez. Well, we've some, seen some great split fingers in this ball game, both from Gonzalez and Corota. But here's a great one to Teixeira down in the zone. Nice job by Hundley to hang on as Teixeira gets just a piece of it. McCann a base hit, one for two in the ball game. Joe Girardi loading this lineup with the left-handers. Who have a 20 point difference, higher batting average against Gonzalez than right hand. There's only one right hander, and that's Jeter. Others are either left handers or switch hitters. You rarely see a lineup where you've got eight left handed batters in it. And when Miguel Gonzalez is on his ball game, that split finger tends to fade down and away to them. Comes a really big pitch, and he's gone to it a lot here. Ryan McCann turns away from that. His base hit came in the fourth inning. Now with one hit and five at bats, lifetime off the Orioles starter. Miguel Montero is going to go to the All Star game, replacing Yadier Molina, the Cardinals catcher from Arizona. Ian Goldschmidt will be going from the Diamondbacks. It's a real sin. And the injuries are a real sin anyway, but this year the All Star games are getting to look like a replacement All Star game. Number of All Stars injured and not going, or those who are going to pitch on Sunday and will just be there but not pitch is increasing on a daily basis. Manny Machado's got it. Shift leaving him over there. Two down. Our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Oh, it's Newman Romero, the veteran uh, infielder. He spent a couple years in the major leagues, had uh, some brief stints with Cleveland back in 2009 and Boston in 2010, and the Orioles picked him up a couple years ago for that added depth, and he's doing a great job in Double A Bowie, hitting 339, four home runs, 34 RBI. Yesterday, a huge day, four for six. He's very versatile. He's been to a couple big league camps, but Walter knows he's down there. He can play all the infield positions. Two away bases are empty. Roberts, a home run, and he's flied out. Brian getting the homer in the second inning. Kelly Johnson, a home run in the third inning. The Orioles are running a wild pitch, another on a sack fly by Davis, both in the fourth inning. 2 2 game. Pitch will be taken inside. Roberts, one ball, one strike count. I like the way Miguel Gonzalez is uh, settling in here. This Yankees offense really aggressive for a couple innings. Hacking at the first pitch, able to put some uh, couple home runs, solo home run. That'll be in the air to Cruz. He's got it. Almost slipped, starting to go back on it. That's eight in a row retired by Gonzalez in a 2 2 ball game.
beautiful summer night. Gary Thorne, Mike Bordick with you. The Orioles heading into the All Star break right now. They are 50 and 41. If they stayed on this pace, they would win 84 ball games. Will that be enough? And will they win even more? What do you think? Well, it could potentially be enough to win the East if they can keep the teams behind them. I think there's going to be some teams that make a surge. I think obviously they want to win more games. It's going to be a test going out to the West Coast, yeah. playing those teams. They're all hot. Uh, and who knows? Will the Orioles make some moves before the deadline and try to bolster the pitching staff? Maybe add a bat. I don't know uh, why they'd want to add a bat. There's a lot of great offense going on there, but they certainly want to get as many wins as possible. That seems like a very no, low number to yep. potentially win the division, especially the American League East that historically has been uh, the best in the game. And you really can't count the Yankees out. You think if they're going to stick around and be in there, they're going to do something. They, it seems like they always do. Uh, to try to be aggressive before the trade deadline anyway and I think if they're close enough but the problem is is that there are so many other teams right now you know you think of that second wild card spot that's what teams really it keeps them in there and they, and they talk about all the time that they have enough to make it to that second wild card spot and be very interesting clearly it's not going to take the number of wins 90 wins in the American League East this year this division just is not the strongest division based on the records that the teams are putting up in American League West however looks like it may be. Oh to the count Steve Pierce delivery to him that's going to go all the way to the backstop. Pierce hit by a pitch to start the fourth inning would come around to score. He has flied out to center field. Steve's the designated hitter real solid year against the Yankees this year. Coming into the game hitting over 400 almost 430 with a home run and four RBIs this year against New York. One two. Little breeze blowing to left at the moment. He jumped on it punches it the second and there Brian Roberts will be. Take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers talking about games remaining. Yeah that strength of schedule for the American League East teams the Red Sox have the toughest schedule and the Orioles coming into the season were projected as having the toughest schedule all around Well, the second half certainly isn't any easier that 507 strength of schedule and then it goes Tampa Yankees and the Blue Jays so it is not going to be an easy test for the Baltimore Orioles but it's good they're in a great position obviously right now. It's a matter of keep driving. Last year, you remember the Orioles were in a good position at the halfway point, and then offensively they kind of dipped, uh, lost some of the production from a couple key players, and ended up fading at the end. Well, they're a pretty confident team right now. And I don't see any uh, sign of this team kind of fading. I think they're right where they want to be. Jones going after it for a strike. Adam with a single, one for two in the ball game, and a run scored. You may have noted not only did uh, Toronto have the as far as strength the schedule is concerned the so called easiest in quotes it's not just the easiest in the east it's the easiest in Major League Baseball based on games remaining and current records. Oh one delivery down to third and foul. And will come back in with an 0 2 count on him. It's interesting Buck Showalter the other day raising his eyebrows a bit he was talking about Adam Jones going to the All Star game participating in the home run derby and he said yep he's going to be there and he'll play in the home run derby and they said and he'll be playing starting in, and then he raised his eyebrows center field and then he stopped because you don't know where they're going to start You're right they're voted as outfielders and uh, he just wants to make clear he wants Adam to be in center field for the All Star game. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way to him, and he will take it down low. Yeah, he should be. And Gold Glove center fielder. Why not stay out there for the All-Star? One ball, two strikes, one down. Jones to be followed by Cruz. The road has settled back in after that wild fourth inning. That's going to go down the line. Each are all over, and it'll be a base hit. So Adam Jones another hit the other way and he's two for three in the ball game and the Orioles get the potential go ahead on with one out. When the Orioles battle with the Angels on Wednesday July 30 at 705 the first 10,000 fans 15 and over are going to get the Orioles tote bag presented by MLB Network celebrate the exciting night of Orioles baseball birds pushing for the 2014 postseason for tickets Orioles.com or 888. Eight four eight bird. Angels also 
Trying to track down a spot for the postseason. Here's Cruz 0 for 2. He has struck out flight out. Corota with Jones falling back into the bag. Teixeira holding, not a big lead at first for Adam Jones. Cruz on a tapper. And it will be foul. McCann, when he realized Cruz wasn't going to run, he let it go. He was hoping it was going to maybe move out into fair territory, but it, it didn't. It looked like it was going to work itself back in there. And Nelson Cruz, Corota uh, has been working the ball down in the zone this whole ball game against him, and he's been able to have some success. And Cruz keeps chasing, so he's going to keep flipping the sliders and the split fingers down there. He's got to try to elevate one. Adam over there first four for four in stolen bases, but as we said, Perota's a tough one to run on. You don't want to make that out with Cruz up. A one delivery on the way to him. That's going to bounce. Won't have to. He's going to go down. That is the third wild pitch that he has thrown in the ball game, equaling his career high. Another split finger. Tough pitches to block. I mean, he's bouncing some. You saw it skip. That's the problem there. It hit the front of the plate and instead of bouncing up like McCann was anticipating, that ball just slid right across home plate, stayed down, and went through the five hole. The only other time he has thrown three wild pitches in a game and he's never thrown four came against the Cardinals back in April of 2011. He's also hit two batters in this ball game. And Fourth time he's done that. He's never hit three batters in a game. One ball, one strike count. Jones off second base. Cruz way up in the air to Gardner. Jones will tag. Won't go. Gardner gets it into the cutoff, man. Cruz out, two down. And as we promised earlier in the game, our AT&T fan photo. Enjoying the ball game here at Camden Yards. It's like a family affair. Two away. Davis at RBI in a sack fly. He has also struck out runner at second base. Orioles looking for that two out. Chris Davis, we talked to you recently. That average not quite there, but the production, the RBI is up pretty good. 46 RBIs, and that sacrifice fly he got his last at bat. He had to work for it. Orioles have gone 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. The Yankees 0 for 3. Runs hard to come by, as are the hits. Orioles only have three hits, all singles. The Yankees have six hits, two home runs, and two doubles. Both those doubles picked up by Ichiro. Jeter right behind Jones at second with the infield moved over against Chris Davis. Corota's delivery to him. That'll be hit the first. Ooh, Teixeira is all right and makes the play. Teixeira going over and to almost bend himself in two as the ball went back towards fair territory. Watch him having to corkscrew himself. That'll wrench her back. And a good play by Corona getting over to cover to retire the side.
And for Baltimore, that's from the Babe Ruth Museum, just a couple of blocks away. The Babe, of course, from Baltimore, and it was 100 years ago when he made his major league debut. There's the picture of the Baltimore Orioles team in 1914. He was in the minors. He debuted with the Red Sox, beating the Indians as a pitcher by a score of four to three. That's with the Providence Grays, 1914. Those are great shots. I thank the museum for that and of course he'd go on to be elected in 36 to the Hall of Fame debut at 19 years of age see the pitching record pretty darn good and uh, yeah he could hit two. <laughs> 714 of course the big number that he is known as so the celebration today of his career in Major League Baseball and the Baltimore born Babe Ruth and all the tales that went with that. Unbelievable how legendary he became. The Sultan of Swat, King of Swing. Stadium named after him, really. <laughs> the house that Ruth built, right. which is gone, it was the uh, second Yankee Stadium. There's also an auction going on here in Baltimore this weekend for the first baseball that Babe Ruth ever hit out of Yankee Stadium, the house that Ruth built. The Yankee Stadium previous to the one that's there now. A news photographer before the stadium was finished and construction was going on got the babe to go to the ballpark on a snowy day in winter two months before it opened and asked him to just hit a few balls so he could take some pictures and write a story so the babe did one of them went into the grandstands of the unopened yard and one of the people construction workers picked up the baseball took it to babe and had him sign it it was picked up by a baseball collector Joel Platt from Florida who's had it for six decades. It's going to be auctioned off this weekend in Baltimore. You going to bid on that one? I'm not going to bid on that. 3-1 <laughs> delivery. Popped it up. Hundley coming back. Nice play. Found the railing. Gets Ichiro. That really was a fine play right there from Nick Hundley. Very hard to do uh, as a catcher. Showing the good range. But actually when he was picking up the fence there he was working himself to the left knowing that that ball was going to be slicing back over so he ends up in a perfect position makes it look pretty darn easy real good play to get each row first out of the seventh inning here's Salarte who has popped out and flied out he'll take it inside well Mark McGuire's uh, home run ball the 70th sold for three million the auction house is doing the auction believes Babe Ruth's ball will sell for more than three million dollars. Yeah. It's never I, been up for auction. It. Yeah I do too. I think I think it will. 1 0 delivery on the way that will be fouled off. We were talking about Solarte and how the numbers went down for him. Solarte started out he hit 303 in April 296 in May 164 in June. And it's hitting 182 in July. Yeah, quite a that's quite about a drop. Yeah, it's <laughs> about four seasons rolled into one right there. This is the baseball that's being auctioned off. This is it. This is the ball that was hit out of Yankee Stadium, the first one before it ever opened, signed by the Babe. They've gone through the history of it to make sure it's authentic. Pretty huh. good uh, signature too. It's it's readable. One two delivery and that'll be off the fists again popped up third base Machado. He's got it. Solarte is retired. The fifth annual Casey cares 5k at Oriole Park takes place Saturday August 2 at 8. Nick Marcakis and his wife Christina will serve as the race ambassadors. 3.1 mile run walk will begin outside the park end on the field. Runners get a race shirt, the race packet, refreshments. Winners in each age group will be announced in a special pregame ceremony later that day. Go to Orioles.com slash Casey Cares to register. Nick and his wife and a great fundraising effort which always attracts a lot of folks. Here's Kelly Johnson. The home run came in the third inning, his sixth of the year. Two down here in the seventh. Gonzalez's delivery. A miss down low for a ball. He's been rolling here through the middle part of the ball game. You saw that little stat there. Ten consecutive hitters in a row retired for Miguel. Shift on against Johnson. 
their DH. He's now had three home runs against the Orioles this year. He went around on that. Three home runs, four RBIs this season against the Orioles. Twelve home runs in his career. See that power zone on that uh, home run that he hit. Ooh, behind him. Ooh la la. And played umpire is going to walk out, hit him on the back. That of course so dangerous because your instinct is to move that way right into it. All right, well you see uh, Nick setting up way away, and this one Miguel holds on to way too long. Square Johnson up in the back. So now Gonzalez has hit a batter. That's the seventh batter he's hit this year. Garota has hit two. And here's Gardner, top of the order, two strikeouts and a fly ball out. 45,389 sellout crowd, 45389. It's in a real good ball game. Off speed delivery tied up, Gardner, in their first strike. This is what Miguel's been doing so well here. After the Second and third inning when the Yankees hitters were real aggressive on the first pitch fastball. He's been able to mix in the off speed pitches. He's thrown some nice sliders in there to get ahead as well. Back to the bag goes Johnson. Ten in a row had been retired by Gonzalez before he hit Johnson McFarland in the bullpen for the Orioles. Gonzalez coming off an eight inning performance against the Red Sox. 0 1 count. There are two down. And that pitch will be taken for a strike. Another one he throttled back on at 81. Yeah, real good pitch. And split finger showing great command of that pitch right now. Very efficient throughout this ball game. Just 98 pitches thrown. Conley working him well. Get him deep into the game. Oh two. Johnson the lead at first base. And the ball will be up high. Gardner's had five hits and 18 at bats off Gonzalez in the seventh inning of a 2 2 game. Two home runs, Yankees. Brian Roberts, Kelly Johnson delivering them. Wild pitch and a sack fly delivered by Chris Davis. The two runs to the Orioles. Long hold and the 1 2 delivery. That'll be blooped. Machado, room, and he's got it. Good job. That'll do it. Runner left on. Seventh inning stretch time here at Camden Yards in a 2-2 ball game. to you by 
PNC Bank for the achiever in you. By visit Annapolis.org. Find it here. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Great look. City of Baltimore. Yankees and Orioles tied at 2 2. Fan seventh inning stretch right there at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Miguel Gonzalez, the Orioles starter. Oh, is he locked in? Very dominant here through the last few innings. Now the Orioles will try and get one on the board. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. It'll be Hardy, Machado, and Flaherty do up. Hardy. Has grounded up and hit by a pitch. Orioles have left three on. None in scoring position in this ball game. Best chance for some runs the Yankees had came in that fourth inning. Leadoff single, followed by a double, second and third. Only one out. Gonzalez left them on. Again, if uh, anybody but McCann running in that fourth inning, he was the lead runner. We got a single and Onichiro's double. Virtually anybody else would have scored on that. But with the bad wheels right now hurting, he couldn't score and was stranded at third. In the air to right. Suzuki there and he's got it. One down. Join us tomorrow. Morrow's action game two of this three game set. Tillman and Gosman will make the start for the Orioles against Shane Green. Our coverage on Masson begins at 3.30. O's extra presented by Geico. And our game coverage at 4 on Masson and WJC. All the access you need right here on Masson. And again, we don't know who the Orioles starter is going to be. It's supposed to be uh, announced after the ball game tonight. Whether it would be Kevin Gosman. Or Chris Tillman of Aldo Jimenez has gone on the DL with a sprained ankle. He was scheduled to start tomorrow. Manny Machado has struck out it into a fielder's choice. He'll take the pitch for a strike. Estancias in the bullpen. That's one of the pitchers we were talking about who's so good. Oh yeah, uh, unbelievable strikeout rate this season. Uh, real good fastball, all-star out of the Yankees bullpen. One ball, one strike on Manny. With that pitch count at 97. They like to keep him just over 100. Ground ball towards second. Brian Roberts perfectly positioned. Two down. Well, Kuroda's game plan uh, seems to be throwing. A lot of off-speed pitches to this Orioles offense, and he's really kind of neutralized them. Uh, aside from the three wild pitches and a couple hit batters, he's done a nice job. You see the pitchers very evenly matched here. It's all 100 pitches in uh, Corota 98. First start he had against the Orioles, his second start of the year, gave up the two runs. On eight hits, six in the third, and then on June 20, no decision, two runs, four hits, and six. So the Orioles have not been able to get by that two runs against Corota in the starts he has made this year. 19th start of the year for him. 1 0 count on Flaherty. Flaherty 0 for 2 in the ball game, 0 for 11, lifetime off Corota. 1 0 delivery, and that one's going to be inside to him. Well, Corota threw JJ uh, Hardy a 2 0 fastball. He falls behind here to Flaherty, and Flaherty is a real good fastball hitter. Probably hunting that dead red heat right now. 2 0 delivery on the way, fouled off. Flaherty getting the start and second base in this one. Jonathan Scope has played an outstanding defensive second base, has had his struggles at the plate as the young player. There he is on the right, learning how to wield the bat at the major league level. No easy task. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way. Flaherty takes and it's a strike. 
McFarland's ready in the bullpen, so you got to believe he's coming in. Joe Walter does not get him up just to throw. No, he really doesn't. I mean, he manages his bullpen as well as anybody I've seen. Really taking care of the arms out there. That'll go to Roberts again. So another one two three inning we've completed seven and the ball game remains tied at two two and it looks like McFarland will be in. They played. This is off the team's Twitter chatter. So uh, recapping, we led seven to two. They led eight to seven. We tied at eight eight. They had an eleven eight lead. Then we walked off with a twelve eleven win. The tides in the first of two against the Atlanta Gwinnett team. Triple A. They were led uh, by Xavier Paul at a three for four ball game, a home run, and five RBIs in that game for the Tides. Severino had a Blown save and a loss for the Braves. Brock Huntzinger got the win in relief. He's now three and three after Clay Rapata had a blown save in the ball game for the Tide. So they've got now they got another game to play. <laughs> Yeehaw. Baseball is fun. That's how that Twitter ended. It can be if you win. Yeah. <laughs> if you right. win the first game of a doubleheader. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Well, that's chitter chatter. It didn't <laughs> exactly look the same. Here is Jeter. Jeter goes after the first pitch. Hardy's got it. Jeter's got an 0 for 4, one away in the eighth inning. Well, can you beat the best? Join millions of players now. The only official home run derby mobile game from MLB.com. Square off against your friends from around the world. Live in the multiplayer derby mode and climb to the top of the leaderboards. Download Home Run Derby today for free on the Apple App Store and at Google Play. We're in the eighth. Ball game tied at two. The Yankees haven't had a hit since the fourth inning. When they picked up a double off each row. Miguel Gonzalez obviously still in the ball game. McFarland still throwing out in the bullpen. Here's Ellsbury a single one for three. Another ground ball. Flaherty over to get it. Two down. Everybody anxious to make an out. Yeah well Miguel's uh, working some good fastballs here down in the zone. The two seamer to get a couple ground balls. From Jeter and Ellsbury and. Starting this uh, inning off, Miguel came in with 100 pitches. Well, now he's at 102. Uh, Ryan Webb joins TJ McFarland now in the Orioles bullpen. Two down bases empty. Mark Teixeira, 0 for 3. And a lot of first ball swings have been taken in this game by both ball clubs. Credit to the Two starting pitchers here have been willing to throw strikes. Um, Miguel Gonzalez really backing up that fine performance he had in his last start against Boston. 
The Sheriff will take that one up high. Big shift on against him. As usual, the outfield basically straight away. The infield completely shifted around against the Sheriff. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way and a towering pop up. Flaherty was back out there, the second baseman, will put it away. 1 2 3 inning. Amazing job by these two starters. We're going to go to the bottom of the eighth ball game tied. First game of three on the weekend against the Yankees. 2 2. the lumber tonight take a look at it Orioles getting some basics there haven't been many RBI sack fly Chris Davis Jones would scored Jones got a base hit the other way and his next time up but got stranded we've got a 2 2 ball game and Corota is out for the Yankees as they'll turn to their bullpen yeah, it's been quite a pitcher's duel here Corota seven innings just the three hits allowed a couple earned runs no walks in the ball game but he did have three wild pitches and a couple hit batters three strikeouts 103 pitches thrown for Corota he gave his team a chance here but Miguel Gonzalez has been out dueling him now Dylan Batances in the ball game we've been talking about the power arms check out the strikeouts 81 strikeouts 16 walks and 53 and a third innings of work that 152 earned run average opponents hitting just 128 overall lefties at 140 and the righties down to 115 and you wonder why well he's got a power fastball to get it up to 99 miles an hour but a curve and a changeup to go along with it the lefties are going to see that curveball but Primarily fastball and curve for both the lefties and righties. And it looks like uh, Miguel Gonzalez will be out of there as well, but any runs here would go to his benefit, of course, as we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Baton says the Giant on the mound will work to Nick Hundley, who will file it back. Baton says has pitched two games against the Orioles this year, only two innings, gave up one hit, struck out three. Well, the Orioles have not been able to get anything off him. Corona with a fine performance, couple of runs, three hits over seven innings. Yet he leaves having three wild pitches, two hit batters that really cost him. He didn't walk anybody and struck out three and his non decision. 0 1 the count. Narcagus appears to follow, fouled away. We talk about the strikeouts uh, for the New York Yankees. Well, Batances leading the way. Most strikeouts in relief at 81. Doolittle from Oakland, 61. Davis, 60. And three other players tied at 57, but a wide margin there. Mm. And he'll add another. A breaking ball. Well, that's his big strikeout pitch. It is a wipeout curveball. He's been struggling with the command the last couple of years, but he has locked in. He throws it hard, and look at that late finish at the end. 
Good bite to pick up the first strikeout here. Those numbers on Batanzas average out to uh, almost 14 strikeouts per nine innings in relief. It is the highest mark in the majors, as you might imagine, this year. Here's Nick Marquez against him. Nick with an 0 for 3 in the ball game. Batanzas ground to the third. What a leap! Salarte's got it and gets the out. Big play. And a pretty athletic play by Salarte there drawn in on Marcakis. Nick chop one chops one off the dirt. Shows his ups here. There he is tight on the grass. It's the good read able to set his feet and power up to make the play. And gathers himself in a strong arm to get Marcakis for the second out. The two down and nobody on and as these innings have gone the outs coming in a hurry. Here's Pierce. 0 for 2 hit by a pitch score to run. And it'll be inside to him. We're in the eighth inning tied at two. Orioles have three hits all singles. They've not had a hit since the sixth. Zach Britton the Oriole closer getting ready if this game. Stays the way it is he will be coming on in the top of the ninth inning. New York born Batonsis with that breaking ball that locks up Pierce. And a one ball one strike count. Well, kind of unfair there 99 miles an hour right across his quads to brush him off the plate and then that. Hard curve ball to get the first strike. Here's the one one delivery on the way Pierce will take it. And it will be outside. Two ball one strike count. Orioles Yankees three games four tomorrow eight Sunday night. Orioles. Looking to gain ground on the Yankees who are in third place starting the day. 2 1 delivery. Ooh, got him in the back. Now well, that'll be the third Oriole to be hit by a pitch in the game, and for the second time, it's Pierce. He has had some problems with some command in his career, and here loses the breaking ball, backs up on him, and catches the backside of Steve Pierce. The only fortunate thing is it was a breaking ball. Right. <laughs> Better than that heater. So Adam Jones will come up with two down. Adam got the single in the fourth inning and would come around to score on that. Had another single in the sixth inning and was left stranded. The dances with Pierce at first. Jones will take it away for a ball. Adam has faced with dances only once, 0 for 1. Well, you see what this lineup can do. I mean, we saw what Corota did in the ball game, really changing his game plan, coming in using his fastball about 50% of the time, and then all of a sudden he's throwing, you know, over 40% split fingers to this lineup. Here, Batances with the great power fastball, but thrown going to the curveball. Here to Pierce and Adam Jones. Jones after the 97 mile an hour heater that was away one ball one strike count. Dorado still leading Tampa Bay in their game 5 2 Reyes has gone two for three with a couple of RBIs Archer and Burley two starters both are out both went five innings. Archer gave up five runs six hits Burley two runs nine hits bullpens have the game Toronto has the lead. Jones waiting on the one on one. The Tonsis delivers to him. Mm. 97 again. And Adam a little bit in between there as that 97 mile an hour fastball rides up and in. I almost have to sell out to get to the fastball. And if you're thinking about something else, it's going to get by you. Pierce back over to the bag. Born in Brooklyn and playing in the Bronx, the Tansis. One to the count. 
Runner goes. Fouled off. This idea right there, getting Steve Pierce in motion. Try to get him out in scoring position. Two strikes on Adam Jones, two outs. Even if Pierce gets thrown out in this situation, you get Adam Jones to lead off the next inning. Nevada could get a hit. Yeah. He might get a go ahead RBI. Now Pierce will have to be careful in the throw over, obviously. The Tons is already having done that once. One two runner goes Jones files it back again. So now it's a little head game stuff. The Tons is thinking OK well if Steve Pierce is probably going to be running. Do I want to throw the breaking ball and give him an opportunity to get in there at second base or should I throw the fastball. Try to give him a chance to get thrown out at second base, and Adam Jones waiting on the 98 mile an hour fastball, probably his best swing of this at bat, just missing it, fouling it straight back. Find out right here. One, two, runner not going to matter. Two strikeouts in the inning, but Tonsis does what he does. He gets K's. We go to the ninth. Two, two. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. By Blimpy. Stop by your local Blimpy after 4 p.m. and enjoy any large deli sub for just $5. Get more after 4 at Blimpy. And by Chapin Davis. Providing investments that can provide income from your retirement plan. Call to learn more 800-222-3246 or at chapindavis.com. Ninth inning, ball game tied, 2-2. Both starters are out of there and non-decision. Well, Miguel Gonzalez, a back-to-back -back great performances, eight innings apiece here, six hits in this ball game, a couple earned runs, five strikeouts, 105 pitches thrown, a fabulous outing once again from Gonzalez. Now it's time for the Jiffy Jiffy Lube pitching change. Change is good, especially when it's your oil getting changed to Jiffy Lube. Give your vehicle relief with regular oil changes at Jiffy Lube and help stretch the life of your engine. Well, it's Zach Britton. One of the premier closers in the game, 15 saves this season, and taking over that closer role, 1.33 earned run average, 37 strikeouts, the 13 walks in his 47 and a third innings of work. And we always talk about that power fastball. And McCann will stand in as we go to the ninth, and he will take the pitch for a strike. He's picked up a single, one for three in the ball game. He's got a two for five lifetime for Brian McCann off the left hander Zach Britton. Oh one to the catchers outside. For Britton this season against the Yankees he has suffered a loss and a blown save. Two games pitched against them. Britton working at two and two thirds innings has given up four runs three hits two walks and a strikeout. 
One one delivery on the way and a big cut. Britain gets ahead of him one and two McCann Roberts and Ichiro do up. Here in the top of the ninth inning. 2 2 game the. Hits disappearing for both ball clubs. One two delivery. That's going to be one. That's headed towards the gap. Jones will cut it off. McCann is, goes half speed there with the legs. Can pick up a single. He's on leadoff single here in the ninth inning. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. So the Yankees have got to get McCann out of there, unable to run as he is, and Cervelli will come on to pitch run. We talked about McCann's uh, struggles this season offensively, but that batting average starting to climb, starting to hit a little bit better. A couple hits in this ball game, out of the game for more speed, and the Cervelli comes in to pinch run. Ryan Roberts will get his first at bat. At bat. Against Britain. So we'll turn Roberts around. He had the home run. First pitch seen in this ballpark in a Yankee uniform. Second inning, his fifth home run of the year. He's bunting down the line. It's on the chalk. It'll go foul. And making sure Hunley kicks it away with his glove. Yeah, the line's playing uh, a little tricky here. Hunley not wasting any time as he's tracking the ball, chasing Roberts as well. Hugging the line. Robert's hustling down there, but as soon as it gets out there, I'm going to be there with the glove to flip it towards the dugout. Infield signs by Hunley. Roberts has got one sacrifice this year. Yankees trying to get the potential go ahead run down to second. There's nobody out here in the ninth with McCann getting that leadoff single. Ryan Roberts trying to bunt the ball towards first base. You make a mistake, uh, Manny Machado over the there at third. He has that ability to fire back to second base. Delivery on the way is Bunting pushed it a good one. Davis looks and got him. What a play by Chris Davis! Did not hesitate. Makes the throw to Hardy and gets the lead runner. That is going to be about as good as you're going to see defensively in a bunt situation. Chris Davis showing that athleticism turns and fires a seed to J.J. Hardy to get Cervelli. He's sliding in. Ends up not even being that close. What a defensive play by Davis. Tight ball games like this where defense matters. It'll be a fielder's choice for Roberts. Now one down. Ichiro's had two doubles and he has popped out. Machado plays even with the bag at third. One away. Breton with a look over. Ichiro will file it back. Well, this Orioles defense uh, proving once again to be one of the best in the game. Last year, of course, the historic defense. But here in a pressure situation, you won't see many first basemen making that type of play. I mean, he really bounced off first base. A fine athletic move. All the infielders really locking things up there. Of course, more double plays than any big league team. Each are all waiting. Throw over. Roberts, seven out of 11 in stolen bases this season. This is where it's fun if you're a fan, be the manager of the Yankees. Would you send Roberts? Ninth inning. Ball game tied at two, one down. You've got Salarte and then Johnson, eight and nine in the order, waiting on deck. Each row at the plate. You know Brian Roberts has the ability to steal bases. He certainly slowed down the past few years with the injuries that he's sustained. But one thing he will do is try to get in Zach Britton's head. Maybe try to create some pressure on him. You see a couple quick snap throws from Britton. 
Roberts not going. Ichiro taking. It's a strike. Base runners have not attempted, not attempted a stolen base against Britain. He's quick to the plate. It's just that from the left hand side. Unless he tips something, they're not going to take many chances. Ichiro had the doubles in his first two at bats. 0 2 count on him. Britain's delivery. And a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Well, he continues to come up with the big time pitches. We'll go, Ichiro will go down as one of the greatest hitters of all time. And here, 97 mile an hour fastball darting down and in. See Ichiro swinging over the top of that late movement. So here in the top half of the ninth inning, there are now two down. Solarte coming up, he's 0 for 3. Switch hitter has struggled against the left handers, hitting 239 off lefties. The sellout crowd into it on both sides with a lot of Yankee fans here. Pitch inside, good play by Hundley. He scoops, holds Roberts at first base. Solarte stepped out, checked down to third, probably wanting to see whether or not the runner was going to be given the steal sign from Robbie Thompson. Relayed from Girardi. Solarte's got some power. Roberts off first, 1 0 delivery. 2 0. Yeah, Solarte's got some power, and uh, Brian Roberts still has some pretty good speed at first base. The Orioles trying to close up the gaps in the outfield, but they're giving him that left field line a lot of room. And they're hoping that he isn't able to turn on Zach Britton's fastball. Here's the 2 0 delivery on the way, went outside with it, skipped off the plate. So the count goes to 3 0. Kelly Johnson, left handed hitter, the DH is going to be pulled from the on deck circle. There he goes. Number 33 leaving there, and the Yankees, just in case, bring Wheeler out. Three zero count. Solarte has got to take here. He does, and he's on. More importantly, it pushes that runner down to second base. That is the first walk surrendered in the game. Wow. So now runners at first and second base. There's Ellis Wheeler is going to come on as the pinch hitter. And a two run home run in the fourth inning and went two for four against Cleveland yesterday. Working off the bench in this ball game, Wheeler with good speed at second base in Roberts. Solarte on at first with two out. And it's Ellis Wheeler. Uh... Was in the Orioles organization a couple of years ago and did some good things in Double A. I think had some time in Triple A as well. Signed a minor league deal with the Yankees and did some good things in spring training. But getting an opportunity now at the big league level, first at bat, the major leagues hit a home run for the Yankees. Wheeler has played in only eight games. He's had 18 at bats, two home runs, three RBIs. Is old for one. As a pinch hitter. Roberts off second base, the 0 1 delivery in the dirt under the back foot, scooped up by Hunley. Well, Nick Hunley's uh, doing a fine job behind the plate. Made some great uh, blocks in this game. Actually, a couple here for Zach Britton. Here's the 1 1 delivery. Chopper, third. Manny Machado scoops. And that'll do it. 
No runs, one hit, no errors to her left on base. Buckle up time. Pull it tight, pull that strap, bottom of the ninth. Ball game tied, two, two. Noise in the background, 2 2 going to the bottom half of the ninth inning. Rick, this is really a, not only a tight game, but a great game. It has been a bit of a pitcher, Duke. Gonzalez gave up two runs on home runs to the New York Yankees. Brian Roberts, our old pal, hit one against us. Kelly hit one also. But you know what? The Orioles haven't hit a home run yet either, and it is the bottom of the ninth. And it for the bottom of the ninth. Let's go upstairs to Gary and Mike Border. All right, Tom and Rick will be on the edge of the seat as the 45,000 are here. Tonsis will stay on. He hit a batter in the eighth inning. Cervelli will come on to be his battery mate after pinch running for McCann. And Batonsis will be facing Cruz, Davis, and a Hardy due up for the Orioles. One more wins it. 0 oh, for 3 in the ball game for the American League leader in RBIs and tied in home runs. Matanzas delivers to him. Cruz will take the breaking ball for a strike. Cruz has not faced Matanzas before. And after seeing that pitch, probably. <laughs> was real happy about that. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Cruz to short. Jeter. One away in the bottom of the ninth. Our aerial coverage provided by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Call 1 800 DirecTV. All the great shots from overhead. Davis coming up. They'll put the Shift on. Salarte, the third baseman, will move over and play on the other side of the diamond with Brian Roberts going back into the outfield. Chris Davis, sack fly RBI. You struck out, grounded out. Orioles, two runs, fourth inning, one on a wild pitch, the other on the sack fly. Home runs by Roberts and Kelly Johnson, accounting for the Yankee runs. Yankees have not. Did not have a hit between the fourth and ninth innings. The Orioles have not had a hit since the sixth when Adam Jones picked up the one out single. Pitcher dominated ball game here in game one. And Perotto, a fine job uh, for the Yankees, and now here Batance is dealing. That's a big reason why he's had so much success. The ability to command that breaking ball. And flipping it in there for strikes, and then you can bury some too to get the strikeout. You're thinking about the 98, 99 mile an hour fastball through the hole at bat. One, two delivery to Davis, then he did not get a good look at Batances. Pretty good finish here on this curveball. We've seen a lot of mistakes made with it. Would gear up for the fastball, and he has command. Comes a very big weapon. Big strike out there on Chris Davis. McFarland ready to go for the Orioles. Hardy 0 for 2, hit by a pitch. Tonsis will get it in there for a strike.
Two down, bottom of the ninth, nobody on. Yankees have out hit the Orioles 7 3. Yankees have left seven on. The Orioles have left four. Hardy way out in front on the 83 mile an hour pitch. Boy, that's that's not fair. No. Well, from 99 to uh, 83 with a bend in it. 0 2 delivery on the way. Hardy chases. Savelli gets it. And sports fans. In the first of three against the Yankees, free baseball for all. We're going to go to the 10th inning. This game's tied at 2 2. Eight and three, the Yankees five and four. We go to the tenth game at two-two. And T.J. McFarland now in the ball game. Eighteen games this year, three-three-four earned run average, twenty strikeouts in his thirty-five innings of work. It's nine walks on the year for T.J. Opponents hitting three oh four overall. Lefties at two ninety four, righties at three ten. T.J. Uh, Buck Showalter talks all the time about. His versatility now pitching in a high leverage situation. Try to keep uh, the Yankees down and get this Orioles offense back onto the field. TJ pitched a couple strong innings in his last outing against the Nationals, allowing just one hit. And on Monday, uh, defeated the Nationals two innings pitch, the one hit allowed, one walk, and had a strikeout as well. So these two teams are making a habit of playing extra innings. Yankees, this is the fourth extra inning ball game in their last 12. And the Orioles, of course, played those extra inning games, tough ones against the Nationals. The one they won on that Monday night game, eight to two, that went 11 innings. They had the 12 inning ball game against Boston. One pitch and one out. Gardner goes after it. Davis gets it. Gardner's got an 0 for five in the ball game. I've never seen the Yankees be so aggressive on first pitches. Nope. And as we said, they were third in the American League in pitches seen for plate appearance coming into the game. So the figure whatever the hitters meeting was talked about going after pitches, I guess. At least that's what they've done. Jeter's got an 0 for 4 in the game. Jeter against the lefties, 262. Been a little better, about 15 points better against right handers this year. We're in the 10th, tied at two. Orioles trying to win a game in which they have scored both runs, neither on a hit, one on a wild pitch, one on a sack fly. They've had only three singles in the game. The Yankees have hit the two home runs. Yankees have had the chances more so than the Orioles did not convert. Jeter got jammed. Flaherty. Two down. 
TJ getting a couple quick outs on some weak ground balls. Good job there, riding one in on Derek Jeter. Ellsbury coming up. Ellsbury's got an 0 for 6 against McFarland. Gonzalez, two runs, six hits over eight. The Orioles starter, outstanding performance. Britton came on, worked an inning, had a walk, a strikeout, a hit. Now McFarland on. Garota, two runs, three hits over seven. Matanzas, two innings worked. Zeros. Did hit a batter. Scoby Ellsbury stands in, a base hit, came back in the third inning. And he will take the pitch inside for a ball. First extra inning ball game these two teams have played against one another this year. One oh delivery. That one is on the inside corner. Warren and Robertson up in the bullpen. Those games previously played against the Yankees in New York, only one one run game. Third game they played was a 5 4 Orioles win, not in extra innings. And one Orioles, and two. Orioles scored a lot of runs up there uh, in their wins as Tommy Hunter starts to get loose in the Orioles bullpen. TJ McFarland in pretty good command here. A couple weak ground balls and now up. One and two on Ellsbury, that good sweeping slider to get ahead in the count. Full house seeing a great opener to this series. That one squirts through. Two ball, two strike count. McFarland turning into the one of the real workhorses for this ball club. 2 2 record. One game start. 2 2 delivery. Leaned. Took it. 3 and 2. Tried to bring it back on that outside corner. Just missing there. Is Barry a good take? See it working itself off a little bit. DJ 3 2, a speedster at the plate. Ellsbury will go after it. Fair ball. Davis, fine play. McFarland gets it. A one, two, three inning with some good D to help finish it off. Orioles coming up, bottom of the tenth. Machado will lead it off.
The tenth inning tied at two and to the bullpen again for Adam Warren. Adam Warren in now 41 games this year, 263 earned run average, pretty good out of this Yankees pen. 45 strikeouts, 15 walks on the year. Opponents hitting 253. Lefties down to 209. Righties up though at 292. The Orioles faced him back on June 22nd and put a four spot on him. Manny Machado will be coming up as part of the 11th inning against the Nationals. He got one of these. Yeah, big home run reaching out on the breaking ball. Give the Orioles uh, the extended lead there in extra innings. And Manny Machado has been red hot here recently. We talked about his production. He hopes to continue here in the extra innings. Warren against the Orioles fourth game he's appeared in the previous three he gave up four runs five hits and two and two thirds innings three walks two strikeouts not effective at all against the Orioles Manny Machado will take the pitch outside for a ball Tampa Bay's had a big rally Sean Rodriguez three RBIs to lead Tampa Bay back from a 5 2 deficit to tie it up at 5 5. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Manny down the line. That's going to be a fair ball. Each row will watch it bounce around in the corner. Manny's on his way to second, thinking about three. He'll stop right there. Orioles get the potential winning run. The second base leading off the 10th. Manny Machado picking up his 10th double of the season. It does not get much better than this. Staying on top of the high fastball, and this ball is blistered down the right field line. We're not going to see many hit that hard from a right hander the other way. He got on it. Walks in the second base. Machado against Warren is now three for four. Now the Yankees talking about defense. As Ryan Flaherty will be coming up with an 0 for 3 in the ball game. Right. The Yankees looking for a bunt. Ryan Flaherty out early today, actually, speaking of the bunt, working on bunting. We saw in last night's ball game, Caleb Joseph couldn't get a bunt down, so Wayne Kirby brought some guys out to work on the sack bunt. Not bunting there. Infield playing the bunt all the way around. They were coming at the corners. Jeter's at second. Roberts to cover first. All kinds of holes. So, but Showalter decided let him swing away here and see if we can catch the Yankees moving. Couldn't connect on it though. 0 and 1. Neither team, as you saw, has had a hit with a runner in scoring position tonight. One here. Ball game over. Outfield in a couple of steps. Now he squares. Popped it up. No play. Boy, Ryan Flaherty getting out over the plate. Warren rushing a fastball up and in. And really, that ball gets Flaherty. Flaherty doesn't even want to go with that one. Oh my goodness. Pretty lucky he actually got the bat on it. Might have caught him in the chest. Flaherty 0 and 2, still playing the bunt. Duarte's in at third. Teixeira is backed up at first. And a swing and a strikeout. So Warren gets the K. Runner stays at second. One down. A hard breaking ball down in the dirt. And Flaherty just trying to protect with the two strikes. A little over aggressive there. Some tough pitches. A first pitch slider. In off the plate and then the fastball and the bunt attempt. He finishes him off with a hard curve. Nick Hundley's chance. Hundley's had a base hit, one for three in the ball game. Marquecas on deck. Machado with a leadoff double. Brian Roberts will hold him tight to the bag at second. In the dirt, nice stop. Savelli keeps it in front of him and holds the runner. Yeah, really good block there. Had to slide uh, way over, keep that breaking ball in front. And once again, we see another Yankees pitcher going to more off speed pitches against this Orioles offense. Yeah. 
1 0 count. One ball, one strike count. Hundley trying to drive it. He was on that, but just a little extra movement on the slider. Up and down and away. Finds himself in a good spot and not out of third. One ball, one strike count. Orioles trying to win it right here in the tenth. Breaking ball, it's down and away, and it's one and two. You can see why this Yankee bullpen's piling up all these strikeouts. Matanzas, a couple of innings, he had three strikeouts, zeros. Warren's already got a K here, having faced only two hitters. One ball, two strike count, runner off second in the dirt. Another good stop by Cervell, and he finds it. Boy, when these guys are spiking their pitches, they're spiking them hard out in front of the plate. All these catchers have had to work tonight. This is a tough pitch to block, and you, know, you do whatever you can. Catch it in the face if you have to, and that's what he does. He gets over the top right in the chin. Not going to mask off. Two ball, two strike count. Machado the lead. Ball to center field. Base hit. Here comes Machado. Here comes a win. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Orioles win a tenth. 